Okay, so we're live. We're going to talk about <laughs> Rank Busters. Is it time? If you're on YouTube, you missed the first 15 minutes of nonsense. You're lucky. <laughs> we're unlucky. So we're going to talk about a few different things tonight. Yes, yes. We're going to answer your questions, of course, as we always do in Kickstarter Live. Mm. So the question, I can't, I can't see where the button is because my stream's not working, but it's up, oh, it's yeah. up here. It's definitely up here somewhere. It's up there. <laughs> if you have any questions, put them up there, and at the end of the, the live, we'll come back and we'll go through every single question that we have. Um, we're going to chat a lot about heroes tonight because we have four new heroes, minis, skills, weapons, and most importantly, Ed has brought along the very much prototype, still very much in development, for hero decks for us to have a little look at and get an idea for the gameplay and personality of the characters. Now, we had also talked about doing some Not of This Earth, the expansion um, updates tonight. We're going to give you a little bit of information on that before we get into the heroes. Just a small amount. We're going to have a, a proper gallery and a proper update going out later this week where we'll kind of divulge a little bit more information, give you guys a little bit more of an insight into the kind of world. But we thought, because you're here with us, there's 439 of you, we'll give a little bit uh, of a teaser, a little bit more insight into what you can expect from the Nod of This Earth expansion. Um, I'm going to kind of pass it over to you, buddy, I guess. You <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Well, dropping me in that one I get, there. I, I tell you what, I'll do the fluffy bit, then you can talk about some of the gameplay. Fluffy. Play, some of the fluffy bit, because I like the, the fluffy bit. So, in the not, not, uh, uh, not of this earth. No, not, no, 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 In the not of this earth expansion. That was very nice. I, I do you know what? Before, before we get into the not of this earth expansion, did any of you watch the speed play through? First of all, I'd love to know if any of you watched it because it was something we tried it a bit different. There's two things I want to say about the speed playthrough. There was one amazing thing in it. If any of you caught, Ed did slow mo at one point, oh, wait. which meant when I sped up to ten times speed, he actually went the right speed. I forgot that. Did any of you did any of you catch that? Because I left that in the video <laughs> purposefully. As a second thing, we're actually going to try. Hopefully, I'm going to going to fingers crossed this. But we're going to try and film another another Let's Play or another video in our studio here with the full gameplay ready for you guys to see. So we're actually going to do um, we're going to do a, a different mission. We're going to do a, a different faction. We're actually going to go up against um, Wolf for the first Wolf, yeah. time, General Wolf for the very very f oh yeah, bring him in, bring him oh, in. Yep, sorry. Um, so see if he press the button. Oh, there's my hand. There Look at him. We're going to bring him in for the first time. And for the very first time on the tabletop, you're going to see him joined. <gasps> Nine. Where's the other one? Yeah, that is neat good. By his, uh, I hope those are in shot. Now. See, it's hard for me to tell. Well, um, it, it looks like it. I'm going to try and keep them out of chat. He's going to be joined by his Sturm soldat buddies. So, Frederick, buddy. Captain put on a million comments that I can't keep up with. <laughs> He's awesome <laughs> in comments. He's like our most enthusiastic guy. We're hoping to have it out before the end of the campaign. I would very much like to get it out maybe Wednesday or Thursday, but I want you guys just to bear in mind we are in the middle of the campaign at the moment, um, so the amount of time that we can kind of fit in is, is tricky. So the hope is that we will have a, a new Let's Play video for you guys um, fighting against General Wolf. Uh, <laughs> I was paying attention. <laughs> They're so nice. Um, fighting against General Wolf um, this, this week before the campaign ends on Friday. Um, can we show off what the bunker did? You know what? Let's bring in a couple of bunker tiles. I think. Yeah, we can show Ooh, a little bit is. of this. I mean, we only we only have right to hand. We only have one bunker tile, right? This is the only. No, this isn't even a bunker tile. Actually. No. No, unfortunately, Jamie, I don't actually have any bunker tiles to hand. These are still castle tiles that we have on the table here. Um, yeah, we'll, these guys you've seen in front of you were, were not uber soldats. They're the Sturm soldats that you get in the core box. The uber soldats. They're the ones that well. There's two. There's the ones in the Not of This Earth Wait. expansion that has, yeah, huge, massive, ba Urgh. massive barrel pistol and his sword and the most amazing quiff ever known to man. Yeah, yeah, he's um, pretty cool. And then there's the new um, Uber Soldats mm -hmm. that have been added to every single place as the stretch goal that we unlocked today. And they're the massive two with the giant hammers ready to squishy, squishy some heroes. Um, and they're going into every single uh, place, not yeah, just people who get Not of This Earth. <laughs> Um, we've had a lot of requests, people saying, oh, can we get something special for the Gun Hole Pledge? And the fact is, there's a $20 discount, <laughs> first of all, so you're, get, you're getting that off. But also, every single uh, stretch goal that we do, we're giving to everybody. We don't want to shortchange anyone. We want to give everyone as much gameplay and as much content as we can. So, Hammer Guy Unk is absolutely his name. Um, <laughs> Bree says, oh, wow, I didn't realize Ed was the model for those minis until just now. 
and nice and pretty. Yes. Uh, so yes, this this week, Thanks, like, fingers crossed, all being well, with you know some support and some luck, um, we do very much hope to have a new Let's Play out where we'll be going up against General Wolf. And some very much prototypes and still very much in development and still still teasing uh, Sturm Soldats because at the moment we're, we're very much getting a feel for what these guys look and play like and what's good in the battlefield. But what we're also going to talk about later on this evening is some of the heroes that we're going to be using in some of the decks. We'll come back to that in a sec. Yes. I jumped ahead. I, 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 I went and got too excited. It's all right. It's good to be excited. So, not of this earth. I said I would I have a little bit of a chat about the fluff of that expansion and about the story, and then Ed's going to give us a little bit of insight into the kind of gameplay you're going to explore. What's going to be different about the expansion to the, the core game? Yes. So, there's four campaign missions in the Not of This Earth expansion, and this is going to be a separate, additional bit of content to the core campaign. So, you can play the core campaign from start to end without ever needing to worry about it, but if you do get the Not of This Earth expansion, then what you'll be able to do is come across the real the Vril. The Vril portal. <laughs> um, so the Vril portal I is essentially this device that the Nazis have been developing and working on very unsuccessfully for quite some time. Mm. The first experiments that ever went through this portal were disastrous. We just did, they did oh, not go well at all. Um, some uh, soldiers they sent through just never returned. Some of the scientists just disappeared and gone. The portal had, had issues. Worse than that, some did come back and were completely mutated, were just deformed, died on re-entry, or in some cases even had become controlled or, or destroyed by the alien races. What's even worse than that, actually, is that some of the more high-ranking Nazis went through as well, and they didn't come back. But what they did, or what did happen to them, though, that's what we're excited to do, uh, <laughs> that you guys discover for yourselves. Don't want to give away too much. I mean, you've got to keep some surprises when you get out. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be a few bosses in there as well who are going to bring their own little uh, problems with them. So the idea of, of Wreckbusters Project Vril with the readmissions is you can play hundreds and hundreds of different types of readmissions, and there's going to be multiple, multiple different ways you can bring that together with loads of different heroes. But we wanted the extra narrative campaign to help players kind of go through the Project Vril discovery the same way the Wreckbusters would. So the idea of the Not of This Earth expansion is the first mission of those four campaign missions will be the discovery. Uh, and hopefully kind of a successful mission to get to the real portal. Mm. The missions that come after, mission two, three, and four, will be what happens when the right buses go through that portal um, and what's going to happen to them and what they're going to come across whenever they're starting to fight on an alien world. Now, first thing to keep in mind is we've shown you guys two alien races, two very different alien races, plus we have the Nazis that have gone through and have not returned. Hello, Mark Tukey, backer 4002. Welcome, Woo. welcome, Mark. You're in a very good place. Thank you, everybody, so much for welcoming him. 4002, wow. We're, 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 <laughs> we're hitting some backers. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Much appreciated. But, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, yes, yeah, so the missions. Cool, yeah. Uh, and raids, where were we at? So we're talking about when you go through, yeah, you go you're going to have the heroes. You find it. But you have two opposing alien races who don't really like each other, they're completely different species, plus you have uh, the Nazis who have gone through and haven't yet returned. Yes, exactly, the lost Nazis, the ones that have been corrupted by the real aliens. And been Willingly mutated. or unwillingly, depending on their... Oh, exactly. So do you want to chat a little bit about what that's going to do to the core gameplay of the game? Yes, so uh, for starters, okay, so this is part of the main campaign, but it is... It's, it's nestled towards the end of the, of the main campaign. So the core box itself will go through from the beginning to the end, uh, uh, campaigns, missions one to four. And uh, before you get to the last one, you'll have, if you have the expansions, you'll have the option to take on the um, aliens. So you go on to mission three, and then you go on to the aliens one, two, three, four, and then finish off with the finale at the end. So it is uh, a continuation, almost like a side branch to it, where you can kind of extend your campaign. Lots of we believe all the hand <laughs> gestures going on. Um, so yeah, so you don't, let's say, uh, it, it, you, the campaign will still end at the end of the core box, but you say it's a nice little booster and to extend yep. the journey of, um, of you know, Ragbusters. So what's uh, you know, interesting about uh, the uh, not of this, uh, not of this uh, 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 campaign is that um, the boards will be very different. So you come up to the portal, you found it at the end of the first mission, and 
in this game, you have all the tiles laid out. But what uh, is going to be different about Not of This Earth is that because there's no corridors, there's no doorways, okay, you're in another world. Uh, and it's not going to be built the same way. You're going to arrive on these tiles. Noise is still going to be a big factor, but because there's no doors and stuff to be opening and closing, you're all kind of exploring this, um, this alien world. And as you come across these, uh, these new tiles, you come across these new areas, you know, the, the, these aliens or even the, the, the Nazi, the lost Nazis will start to appear. And what's interesting is that because they're different factions, the Nazis and the aliens will be, they won't get along. They're all against each other. So it's almost like having a third player in the mix. And this, this is the cool thing for me, because like, as the guys were telling me about this today, I was getting so excited about it, because <laughs> you're going to have these missions sometimes where you're opposing one alien race, sometimes where there's two there, sometimes mm. where you're mixing in the Nazi faction as well, and they're going to be interacting with each other, fighting each other while you're trying to remain undetected. And yeah. even though you're not opening doors, you're still going to be trying to navigate through this world. And because you're going to have 13 double-sided tiles in the expansion, we're going to be able to build a bunch of different maps again to kind of fill out that world. So it's not going to it's going to feel completely different to what you've played in the castle and in the bunkers. Exactly, exactly, because there's fights going around you. So you're coming up uh, along a, a bit along uh, part of the, the map, and you see in front of you there's some Nazis, and then there's also some aliens. And then you know they start fighting amongst themselves, and they almost kind of clear themselves off the board for you. Or they kind of see you guys on the, on the edge, and maybe they'll start to you know put aside their differences, and they'll both turn on you. So it's a bit of like, a, if you get discovered, is it going to be a case of, Ah, we're getting mm -hmm. swarmed by lots of bad things. Or if you kind of remain quiet enough, well, they're going to scuttle amongst themselves and fight and kill each other off. And it's <laughs> going to be a very different experience to right buses itself with the, the narrow corridors and the kind of the choke points. It's going to be a lot more open. Uh, and that's going to bring in a completely new dynamic to the game, which uh, we're excited for you guys to, to get stuck into and play. And of course, just having these awesome aliens running around. Uh, you can see you've got the two factions. One's more real based, so it kind of fires real projectiles and stuff at you and kind of does real based Aww. attacks. Um, and so we've got one of the, uh, th these little mini ones. Little, little, bit, I mean, I still want to call him the little petite predator. Little petite, petite predator. Little petite predator. Petite predator was this guy's code name during the development days, uh, which I very much liked and very much wanted to uh, to keep a hold of. But what what we're actually calling them is Ogin or Argan, which Ogin, is yes. essentially um, essentially eyes. It's, it's these alien eyes that act as sensors for the large real alien that Leo was showing last night. Taily things behind it. Yeah, that's my tail impression. Man, they modeled after when, when, are we, when are we going to play charades together? I feel like we would destroy. Like I feel like it doesn't normally end well for people. They get they either laugh too much to be able to guess, or uh, they get lost in my interpretive dance. <laughs> oh god, I'm going to be famous on the internet for the wrong reasons. Uh, Unc uh, says, let's call it a walking onion. <laughs> uh, that's a new one. I haven't heard a walking that one onion. Before. A onion. A one, you know. a, a one, a one, one, yeah. And then never one. We've got uh, this other dude. Oh yeah, no, I didn't finish, finish explaining him. So yeah, yes, yeah. he's going to be the eyes uh, essentially for the one with all the ta the tails, uh, kind of guiding it, allowing it to attack the heroes. And then you've got this other one, which is called it's, if I remember correctly, it's the Kleinen. Uh, Kleinen, yes. These are the, the parasites. Which I believe is that uh, it's German for. Never remember it's monster or something. This is where, yeah, this is where or Jake's alien. <laughs> this is where we need uh, Lord Savior Jake to, <laughs> to guide our uh, inferior knowledge. But um, yes, yeah, so chess burster says James. Yeah, chess, chess burster. Oh, they're, they're horrible little things. Look at those little stabby, clawy things. No, uh, what these guys do is they will uh, they'll kind of almost take over um, their targets, mm -hmm. allowing the the larger uh, alien of their faction to kind of control the uh, whatever they, they clamp onto. Mm -hmm. So they're a bit more almost like mind control, a bit more psychic yep. in, a, in a way. And uh, yeah, so two very different uh, kind of styles that they're going to be going down. Um, so you've got these two little factions and then you've got the Nazis as these uh, alien monster hybrids. Um, and yeah, they're gonna be just after everyone. They're just horrible. I have a confession I want to tell you guys something because someone mentioned Dothorn and said lots of texture there for the painters to work with so a couple of things I want to point out these don't have the textured bases that we will have in the final minis we will have textured bases on bases on all of our minis something else I want to be very honest with you guys we actually printed these quite urgently to get them on camera tonight and we did these at lower quality these you're going to get better quality minis than what you're currently seeing Mm. This was just so we had something nice to show you guys to give you a feel for the kind of three different factions that you're going to be coming across in order of this earth. We we do not skimp on no. when it comes to quality. It's no, just we not. don't. Our little 3D printers going like the clappers. 
It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's really, yeah. The pearly 3D printer gets moved about like, like it's nothing. Just every day it's like, right 3D printer, come on son, you can do it. <laughs> so we started talking to it and they're almost like comforting it and just, you know, being very, very caring of it because it's become a part of the family, really. Well, it's, it's moved into your office now. Oh, it's, oh the power uh, just outside. All, yeah. You can hear it ch chugging away, you know, it's, printing. And actually I said to Ben earlier on today, I was like, it's uh, kind of, it's got the sci-fi noise to it. It kind of mm. makes me think of Captain Picard walking up and saying, Earl Grey tea, hot. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> like, like, we're in the future, man. We just print things. Um, I'm not sure I want to print my tea just yet. No. Although NASA can print pizzas. Print your... 3D printed pizzas. That's the future. You know, I've seen it. I I'll be there. So, <laughs> that's a tangent, that's tangent, given, back on track. Uh, given you guys a, a bit of a feeling for what you're going to expect with Not of This Earth, the thing to keep in mind is you've also got like things like the uh, the Uber soldiers in there, soldats in there as well. You have the Shrieker or Shry in there too. So you're going to have these three different kind of opposing factions fighting and competing with you and with each other. The Nazis are going to be trying to wrangle the aliens and take control of them for their own betterment. The other aliens will be either hunting, depending on which race you're playing with, or trying to take control of the heroes and the other Nazis, trying to manipulate them with the parasites. You're going to have a bunch of different mechanics, something very, very different to the usual guard, patrol, hunt, and um, get in, get out kind of mission feeling. So mm. um, unfortunately, I can't. Oh, well, how about clear bases so you can see the board? It's such a cool idea, Jimmy. Um, I've been very much into um, rebasing my Imperial Assault minis, and I thought very much that clear would work very well. And then I realized how shiny clear plastic is, and it just didn't do as mm. well as I like. For us, um, because of the molding process, it's far easier, and kind of we can make it look much more consistent and much better whenever we do the texture bases directly on with them. Um, it just, uh, what happened to the stretch goals in the campaign page? Um, I'll answer very quickly. They should be there. If they've disappeared, they'll be right back momentarily. We're doing some final tweaks. As you guys will know, especially the people who nailed the social stretch goal on Saturday, mm. um, we've got a lot big last 48 hours coming. We're already in the last four days of the campaign. So we're trying to retweak things, make sure everything's nice and clear for anyone that might come along and join us in the last few days of the campaign. So if you mm. see anything disappear, don't worry, it, it will come back. Um, so if you have any questions about Not of This Earth expansion, pop it in the Q&A now, if you're live. If you're not live, I'm sorry, you should come to the campaign, talk in the comments on Kickstarter. Um, and we'll come at the end of the live, we'll come and answer your questions and go back to it. Yeah. No problem, Salvatore. Just, uh, one, one final thing regarding the, uh, the, the last mission. Of the whoa, 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 what? No, no, I want to know. No, you're telling Are it. you sure? Yeah, yeah. Not going to be a spoiler? No, I'll tell it. Are you sure? You sure you guys really want to know? What I, the want to know. I don't know what you're going to say. I want to know. <laughs> I've, dug, I've put myself in it now. No, you've got to say it. I'm going to get hunted down by Steve and Jake tomorrow. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a very tense last mission, okay? Because you're you're, you've got in to the alien world. You're, you're on the other side of the portal, but you're on the other side of the portal, aren't you? You've got you to gotta get back. Nah, I'm just gonna stay there. You're and gonna, a you don't want to stay there. No, those nasties, because the right buses, they're gonna look to close that portal. No, I'm not gonna send Brick through. Nah. He's gonna become alien. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. What happens if you close the portal, and Brick's on the other side? <laughs> yeah, that's not doesn't count as captured anymore. That counts as lost. Oh, exactly, exactly. So it's gonna be potentially very different. Are they gonna be spat out into you know? two days into the future because they could have fallen through this portal into this, you know, and they could have zipped through and it's like, bam, oh, guys, I'm back. Oh, what day is it? Is it Tuesday? No, Brick, it's Friday. And so <laughs> you've lost three uh, days. It's you've lost Friday, three days 1982. Life. The war's Guns over, Brick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so are, are they going to be captured? Are they going to be lost in, the, in, uh, in, the, in space? Are they going to pop out in a future mission? Just what's going to happen, you know? So it's going to be a mad dash to the portal and you've got to get it closed, but you've got to make sure you don't leave anyone behind because once that portal closes, anything can happen to them. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to... Well, yeah. Um, I'm not going to try and say this. Uki uh, Zab Andri uh, asked a question that I actually want to talk about quite quickly. He says, are there real weapons the heroes can find? Now, we're currently play testing something a little bit at the moment, but it's definitely not in any way final. Because you notice that, yeah, we've shown a bunch of enemies with real weapons. We've obviously got the, the huge hammers. We've obviously got the, the, the tracking bombers. We've obviously got the zombies, all these things that have real stuff. Um, do we have real weapons for the heroes? What, what's, we can say what's currently being played as. What we're, yeah, we can. No, we there's, can. there's no real weapons. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yes, there are going to be real weapons in the game for the heroes to use. Every hero 
every hero's weapon will have an upgraded side. So you've got the normal weapon stats yeah, on the front. Uh, that's the Well, I haven't got the real sides on those. No, we haven't got the real sides on these ones because we actually were playtesting just with these today. Oh, let's throw in the trench gun because everyone likes the trench guns. Oh, 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 oh. You can't forget oh, Hans' go. favorite. Okay, so a couple of, co well, well, Ed's chatting, a couple of sample weapons, uh, weapon fronts. That's fine, let's I can do my hand motions without being judged. Whoop. So essentially, yes. So. This is essentially what's going to be the uh, standard side. Everyone's going to start the game off when they play through with their own weapons. So you can see Hans's Panzer Shrek there, which is uh, very different to everyone else's oh, yes. weapons because if you notice, it's got a, a boom uh, symbol on it. So basically, when he fires it, it's, it's not quiet, guys. It's a, it's a Panzer Shrek. It's going to make a bang. So everyone in the base is going to be like, oh, what was that? And they're going to go, oh, it sounds like an explosion and bad stuff's going to happen. So you don't want to be using that. Mm -hmm. But it is very strong. And it is very good against uh, tanks. So it's armor piercing. It's armor piercing. So we'll come back to that. We'll come, we're going to talk about that. Come back to that later. Yeah. But anyway, that's here. So this is quite special. But we've got the trench gun, which is a lethal weapon. So it, it can only be using, it's only got an adjacent range. Um, and so there will be a, a range icon on there as well. But it can only shoot adjacently. Mm -hmm. But it can reroll its blanks. So it's yeah. a very lethal weapon. And the axe is also lethal. So Beyond with his little trusty axe. Mm -hmm. If you hit someone with that, you can reroll the blanks. So it's a very high chance Beyond's going to take their head off. So this but yes, that's the standard is side. The standard side, yeah. That was a tangent again. Flip them over, and you'll have the real upgraded version of those weapons. So you'll have a real axe, a real trench gun, a real Panzer Shrek. Oh my God, a Panzer Shrek. <laughs> Maybe it makes it silent. <laughs> no, it's no. <laughs> it'll do exact opposite, make it silent. So everyone will then be rolling your your usual attack dice, but you'll be adding real dice to it. And real dice are. Don't forget, before you're all getting insanely excited, this is still being tested at the moment, which is why we haven't shared any firm details on it. So we want to refine it to make sure it feels really good because. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We <laughs> uh, right now we have some insane weapons in the game, and once we yeah. realify them, they're going to get bananas. Basically, yes. Yeah. So you'll be adding your real dice to it as well, and that's just going to create a huge yeah. boost of just death and destruction. <laughs> and <laughs> but there are also there are also real items, of course. You have real injections, real goggles, real shields. I like the real goggles. Um, I don't really have any real goggles on the table, do I? I used real goggles in a play test earlier today, and yeah. they were amazing. Uh, real goggles allow, uh, with the roll of a real dice, because it can, can potentially go wrong, allow you to look through a wall into a room and reveal the items and enemies that are waiting for you, uh, which means you get the opportunity to decide whether you want to deal with that room before you even enter into it, which is fantastic. And the best bit is, they won't know you're there. Yep. Unless, of course, uh, they backfire. And then it's going to yeah. be like a boom effect where it's going to cause them to go, oh, something just went boom, and they're going to be suspicious. So they're going to be on alert because of that. They're going to be like, well, something's bad's happening. Careful of my suspicion alert, because alert is another key word. Uh, and again, these, these are not final dice, guys. These are just these are just white dice yeah. with stickers on. That's not like we will have full color gorgeous dice, of course. Yes, the the angry looking man there with the the the, uh, the, the waves coming off his head. That's a backfire. So if you roll that symbol, uh, yeah, bad stuff happens. Everything just kind of explodes in your face. So yeah, mm -hmm. they are incredibly powerful, but they do have their risks because real's unstable it's very unpredictable it's incredibly powerful but it's incredibly dangerous to everyone <laughs> and the idea is but especially in the campaign this will be really interesting because between missions you're going to have to choose what real weapons you're bringing you're going to have to make sure you don't get ammo for them if the real weapon breaks mid mission you're going to have to find a way to repair it which often involves trying to get more real which could become a hindrance if you lose a main gun in the middle of a mission you're going to mm. have a real issue potentially so yeah there's a, a lot to, to a lot of extra gameplay comes from adding a simple real weapon in so we will absolutely share more about that with you guys in the future but we want to it was a good question and a good chance to kind of say absolutely we want the heroes to have yeah we wanted to talk of. about it for a while actually so thanks yeah. for asking that one you uh, saved me that question <laughs> um uh, jamie asked a nice question here which i want to answer now also mm. but please do please do put your questions up here so i don't miss them as, as they're going through the chat mm. jamie actually asked hey as in the storyline is hitler aware of real now long story short oh, um, I've got cables tangled. Long story short is that the Reich are aware. The Reich are actually the ones that ordered the Rillmeisters to go and start this research. They've sent, although they were really, it was General Gruber and, and General Wolf. And Gisella, yeah, yeah, Gisella, sorry. Um, before really they named themselves Rillmeisters because mm. what essentially happens over the years of the research they've been doing 
is they're now not divulging everything. They're still listening to, to sort yeah. of high command to the right. They're still taking some orders in some way, shape, or form because they, the, the fact of the matter is their initial mission was to make this real uh, either mutations or, or weapons or fighters or close combat machines to go and turn the tide of the war. However, the real masters are kind of getting to different degrees uh, a little bit up themselves, a little bit independent. Well, you've got a little the most bit. powerful yeah. thing in existence. That would get to your head a little bit. Yeah. You know, the old saying, you know, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. You know, they're going to be completely corrupted by this magical, amazing weapon that they've got. And they're like, well, we don't need the, you know, yep. the, the Nazis, we're the real Meisters. We're, you know, and they're going to go off on their own and try and take over everyone. You, you reanimate your 600th, you know, soldier into a real reanimate and you just... It, it you know, does something to you after yeah, a while. doesn't it? <laughs> um, Especially to the zombies. Um, okay, any more questions in the corner? I'm not because I'm going to sit here just asking, <laughs> answering everyone's question. We've got double Jamie's question. We put them up here, guys, in the Q and A, and I'll come back to them at the end. So, shh, I'm so keen, so keen really? to start talking not, about heroes. I'm not getting it. If I have vibe from you, as I, I, so, are you really keen? I'm so keen. Are you really keen. So, do you know what? Let me say something right now. Reichbusters has the coolest character mechanics in the world, right? Because you're not just playing with some carbon copy cut of each hero with a different item, a different range ability. Get out of there, she'll go turn away from you. You get well, distracted like too comment. easily. Um, you're playing with really <laughs> in-depth, interesting heroes that are all gonna come with their very much unique play styles, very much unique um, hero decks with, with feats. And we've got four heroes that we're gonna show off uh, to you guys today and um, that we will be playing. We'll be playing these four heroes during our next Let's Play recording. So this is to give you a bit of insight about how they play on the table. So when we come to play, it'll make nice clear sense. I wanna say right now again, as a reminder, everything's very much prototype. That means the components and also the rules. And um, per Ed was frantically printing and cutting and making sure everything <laughs> looks good today, right up to the moment we were running in. Exactly, spray paint still um, fresh on my finger. It was a great time. But so, okay, let's have, a, let's have a quick vote in the chat. We have know. Hans. Actually, give me the minis over. Oh. We have Hans, we have Tane, not Tien, Tane. Uh, we have uh, Irina, who I'm very glad to say is indeed getting her re-sculpt done. Yeah. That is coming. And we also have Bjorn. So, who, oh, no, bring Irina back. Who would you guys like to look at first? So Irina, Bjorn, Hans, or Tane? Let's see it, who do you want? Hans, Irina, Bjorn, oh look. Oh, there we go. Good man, good man. Oh, that was uh, a glare. And Bjorn, Arena, Bjorn. Lots of Bjorn. Lots of Bjorn. Odin. Odin! Tane says Reese. Come on, let's see. What are Odin's one? beard. Uh, as, Ans. <laughs> oh, we could do it. Uh, an As mini. What was it? Okay. So, so I think an As mini. Tane is not going to. So, who's. So, Bjorn. Really? I think it's. I think Hans. So, it's going to be Bjorn, Bjorn or Arena. Who do you want? Bjorn or Arena. Let's go, go, go. I like the thing on Asmin, you know, it'd be too friendly for anyone to want to attack in the game. <laughs> it looks kind of like, like Tom bullets. Bombadil just walk through <laughs> the game. Oh my goodness, Arena, it looks like Arena's going to get it. Really? Arena, Bjorn, Bjorn, oh. Oh, okay. The last one to appear in five seconds <laughs> will be the one we pick. Go. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, Can we Bjorn? one. Can we Bjorn? Bjorn! Oh, everyone oh. loves Bjorn! <laughs> Bjorn wins. Everyone is so smart. <laughs> everyone had it tight and was like, go. You guys um, ruined my fun. Bjorn, and then we'll do Arena second. Also, good try with the hands there at the end, whoever that was. That was uh, Ashley. Yeah, you almost almost got it. Right. So here we go. Here is Bjorn. Let me get. Uh, uh, he, looks, he looks a bit chilled out, really. Doesn't he? Doesn't he look a bit doesn't relaxed? Doesn't look particularly. Uh, uh, no, I'm not kidding. He's so, Mr. He's Bjorn. Uh, in the spirits of his Viking ancestors, Bjorn is a brave and skilled warrior. He excels at close combat in all its forms and sees the strange creations of Project X merely as new challenges to overcome. When Nazi monsters stalk the corridors, Bjorn uses his trusty axe to tell his own saga. Odin! Odin! <laughs> <laughs> and what does Odin come with? Uh... So, what does Bjorn come with? <laughs> Only comes with a lot of lightning and stuff, but Bjorn, on the other hand, comes with these little treats. So, so what do you want me to start with? Uh, I'll get his weapons out there. Get it? Because we've, we've kind of seen the weapons. Everyone want to see Bjorn's weapon? other things. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, today you have to get the weapons. So, we've obviously seen the axe. Got his trusty axe. You'll notice that the axe, compared to the knife, has got that little extra attack dice. Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more damage than your average 
No. Yeah. So that's quite a... And re-rolls its blanks. And it re-rolls its blanks. It's a very tasty piece of kit. But loses that? loses that ability to, to kind of get nice specials. So is that something that the knife still has? Is it still rocking critical hit these No, days? the no. knife has lost critical oh. hit, actually. The knife has uh, been nerfed. It's been on my nerf list for a while. The knife has <laughs> been nerfed. Oh. Nerf the knife. Um, then we have... Uh, oh, we'll it's a bit of fluff, from, bit the, of fluff. from the cutting earlier. Uh, we've got his Browning 9 mil. Okay, so it's got double tap and versatile. So uh, it, double tap is a bit like burst, mm -hmm. but rather than being able to split the damage between multiple opponents, uh, multiple Nazi enemies, you can actually put it all onto one dude. So you're rolling potentially four dice uh, on this one guy, and so it's like you're double tapping him in the head. Oh, ah, okay. So it's extra powerful, and it's versatile, so it can be used in close combat. So even if a zombie's kind of up in your face, biting you, going, ah, mm -hmm. you can still shoot it in the head and not die. <laughs> um, so his base special abilities, now this is something that again is very much in, in, in playtesting because we currently rock um, a lot of the time with two, two skills, but, but in the campaign and when you're you know, doing missions and you're choosing your teams, when you're playing Team Harrier or you're, mm. you're playing Team... Harrier? No, Team Harrier. Falcon. 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 I knew it said Eagle and I knew it was yeah, wrong. Can't. Um, you will have a chance to customize these. So these are, again, very much something yeah. that may tweak. So, so he comes, first of all, with... With Rage. Yeah. Uh, and what Rage does, if I remember correctly, is it is it's basically it's similar to his uh, double tap. So it allows him to roll extra attack dice. So if he's rolling three um, dice of his axe, uh, it's when yeah. it's in melee. Sorry, um, if he rolls a star, yeah, uh, you see he rolls three blanks. And he's like, oh no, I missed. But because it's the lethal, actually he rolls again and he gets yeah. a star and something. It will allow him to roll an additional two dice. So, so if he's then rolling it, it, five it, it, dice. This, yep a two. That will become and a two. And then he'd add two more because he's in melee. He's raging. Exactly. He's, he's raging like a oh, complete. Oh no, I lost the dice. As it's a table. <laughs> it's not exactly small. <laughs> oh, and they got a sign of the back of your head. It's there just, you go. <laughs> only the best dreams here at Mythic. <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so he's ended up being to six dice and don't even get a start on, you know, when he's getting even stronger attacks. That axe of his is, is the most probably the most dangerous so he's because he's weapon he's got melee. his own rage core ability mixed with the lethality of the axe means he's rolling three attack dice re-rolling the blanks he is uh he's re-rolling the blanks and then he's extra multiplying extra exploding his dice yes so before we get on to his other skill the, the axe is silent which yes. makes it seem like it's the most overpowered weapon in the entire world yeah sounds a bit redonka so how have you balanced it <laughs> It's beyond. He can't keep his mouth shut. He screams everywhere. So he's going around going, Odin! Oh, what a power of four! He sounds like a pirate as well, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, so he's hitting these guys with his axe. He's not being very silent about it. He's screaming in their face. So his axe is silent, but, but he is not. His mouth isn't. <laughs> so early game, yes, he can kill a lot of people, but he's, he's very unlikely to trigger more patrols to so go who's that nutter screaming odin everywhere clearly not one <laughs> of us so they're going to open doors and be like oh that's clearly a viking <laughs> so it does balance itself out a bit so he has to show some restraint so <laughs> you are for odin that be my real booty i'm coming for you you saucy wench groover <laughs> oh, um so i see you the man <laughs> we'll show a second skill and then we'll get into some of his cards because then that will start to bring out where you've balanced that noise and flavor a bit more <laughs> yeah sure so his second skill currently is resilient so um basically he's a viking he kind of shrugs off a lot of damage he's in a bit of a, a berserker rage and so when he's getting shot at and attacked, he can, again, he's, he's all about the blanks. He re-rolls his blank defense dice. Mm -hmm. So he's being shot a few times, uh, but you know, he's kind of going to shrug it off and he gets another chance to re-roll mm -hmm. those blank results. So he's kind of just a very much in your face, kind of aggressive psycho. Uh, he's, I wouldn't say he's a full on tank. He's yeah. still just rolling the two de uh, defense dice, but he can take a bit more of a punishing than other, you know, more stealthy heroes. Yeah. So yeah, he's, you kind of want to be up in people's faces, but don't get too overly confident because you know you got an axe in the day. Uh, it, it's it, you know a rocket launcher is still gonna hurt. You know if someone puts a panda shrek into your face, it's still gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. So you know it's it's a balance between yeah. being a psycho and not getting your head blown off. Being controlled, yeah, yeah. You've Got to control him. He's a, he's a he's so tempting just to throw in there, but you got to have some restraint. So what do you want to start off with with his deck then? So obviously he's got ten action cards and two feats. What? Uh, oh, come yeah. on. I, th I think you get credit for this, this one. I, no, I don't get credit for it. Oh, I, was just, that I, just, I just said this has to be in the game, and if it's not in the game, I'm going to be so. So Bjorn has a feat called. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorn again. Bjorn again. <laughs> uh, 
and so he, he removes up to three of his wound cards, which sounds like it's quite a, uh, you know, compared to some of the techs, it sounds quite weak. But actually, if he's in the middle of a fight getting yep. shot to pieces, and he pulls out and he can just goes, shrugs all off, kind of goes into Berserker Rage yeah. and just ignores all the damage, all the pain in him. He just kind of goes, Odin, I'm beyond again, and then starts <laughs> smacking him around. Um, uh, we'll pirate <laughs> Absolutely. Bjorn to be wild. Absolutely ended me with Bjorn to be Can wild. Can we keep him after the campaign's over? Can Ash we keep Ash? Ashley? I know we're Ash keeping is... you, Ash. Oh. Wait, Ash, you also mean to me on the Discord server. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about you, Ash. Yeah, Ash. Ash shows he loves you by being mean to you, trust me. He's, he's that guy. Yeah, he is. Okay, so what's his second feat then? We've got Bjorn again, which means usually four wounds means you're vulnerable to being captured. And if you if you take four wounds and an enemy is in your space, you're going to be captured. So B Bjorn again is his way of saying, no, no, no way. I've got a whole second life to come back. Uh, We've got his other feet? Oh, his yeah, other so his other feet. feet. So his two feats are going to get them out of the way. Yeah, so this is, um, again, this is another very powerful. And this really is encouraging to get just stuck in the middle of it. And this is one you want to, you know, this card you want to pop off at the you know, an opportune moment when, all these Nazi enemies, all these uh, all these sort of zombies are up in your face. And just imagine, okay, with his rage, with his axe, with this plus one dice, okay, he's in there, he's rolling six, potentially six dice mm -hmm. against zombies and stuff. And he's doing all of them. He's just swinging around mm -hmm. and axe flailing. And he's just killing everything. He's an absolute mm -hmm. nutter. But, you know, it's, uh, it's again, it's gonna, it's gonna be a noisy one. Um, I've clearly forgotten to put a noise value on <laughs> it, if anyone noticed that. Very much a prototype. <laughs> it is going to be a very loud one. It's going to be probably an explosion because he's just going, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I need to work on my Viking voices. Can we make, a, okay. we'll, make a pirate we'll, we'll one work point? Uh, Bjorn, <laughs> Bjorn is going to be my me and says Jamie Ray. Yeah. Okay, so his feats are obviously super strong, but what his, his core gameplay is obviously going to be hacking, slashing, charging, yeah, in, getting so in there. For example, that's a good good example. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not because All of the title. Oh, the pun is so good. <laughs> Axe, no questions. Make a melee attack on two Nazi units in your area with one noise dice, or just a basic advance if you want to modify your move. Or that one, you know, he's just... Um, here we also have an axe through, and this is cool because you, you're going to move into an enemy area containing a Nazi, a Nazi and make a plus two melee attack. So this is essentially him almost like throwing his axe and kind of chasing yes, him after I, it. Yes, I've had to be careful the wording of this yeah. one. I mean, it was originally um, target with an adjacent with a melee, but I, I need to be careful the wording. Yeah. So yes, he's basically throwing his axe in there and he's chasing it up with, uh, he's just kind of, well, he needs to get the axe out of their face, you know? It's, <laughs> it's kind of embedded in their head. Um, so he has to go reclaim it. So he's just lobbed it in there. So he's just, yeah, all of his rage <laughs> gone into that. Oh, I hit my microphone, apologies. Um, but yeah, so that, those are kind of- 500 people watching live. Hello, everybody. Hello to each and every one so of you. So awesome to have you. We've had another two backers during the live as well. Thank you so much. Welcome. If uh, you didn't have, have a little notification come up, we still want to welcome you to the good place. Uh, thank you so much for joining the campaign and joining us here, guys. Yeah, so that, that's kind of the, the main gist of it. It's, it's all very aggressive. I mean, let's see. Come on, give me a couple more. Give me at least one or two more. Uh, or that one, because or, or this one. No, we can do both. We can do both. Uh, yeah, get a couple of example more of his attack cards. So that one's a little, little less punny, you know. Uh, Odin's wrath. Oh, right, I ran right. out of puns towards the end. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty sure the chat could give you a few more puns. I would sure. love to get the puns from everyone. So make a plus one ranged attack on two Nazi units, rerolling blank results, or a plus one, you basically move if you modify it. So and this oh one's yeah, with a, his gun, so it's not with the axe this time. This is him using his browning. So mm -hmm. it's getting some range on him as well, because he can't be all axe. He has to have that gun shooting a few times. And then here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, ignoring the hyphenation. No, there. this is amazing. <laughs> I want to make uh, a plus two AT tack. <laughs> Yes, he also AT, takes down ATATs. AT yeah, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> you didn't notice him in Star Wars. George Lucas cut him out of the deleted scenes. But uh, yeah, so that's for four. Four, four. Thor, Thor, four, Thor, four, loser. <laughs> Thorn that way. Uh, Bjorn that way. Maybe he's Bjorn with it. He's Bjorn with <laughs> it. Yeah, oh god. Yeah, <laughs> he's beyond with it. Guys, Ed, is it Ed at Mythic Kingdom? Edward at Mythic Kingdom? Is, I think it's... Edward. No, Ed. Ed at Mythic Games. Ed at Mythic Games .net. Yeah, I think I'm over emails. Send your puns and they Please. might make it onto your card. Oh no, there's so many emails. Please do. <laughs> or the Discord. We're just, should we set up a pun channel in the Discord chat? Oh, that'd just, be easy to keep track of. You, really, you made a face that really enjoyed that thought. 
Do you were like, ooh. Ooh, I, ooh. I never get emails. Oh, that's like. Well, now they've got my email. I'm never going to hear the end of it. That's the face that someone just brought you a second jug of gravy for your roast dinner. Ooh, so. I used to be a gravy boy. I used to work for Toby Carvery. And there was uh, oh, nothing worse Lord. than carrying those massive Me. crates of gra gra gravy around a restaurant. Oh, so heavy and hot. But it tasted so good. So Bjorn is your real melee specialist. Ways of moving faster, ways of advancing and getting up on the grill with people yeah. doing lots of damage. He comes with base weapons that give him the ability Before. to re-roll and his rage allows him to multiply when he rolls specials. He's the guy we need to get in and deal with stuff up close. Yeah, you thought Claudine was aggressive in their face, but Bjorn is, he's just, he's just her to another level. Yeah. He, but he's not quite about it. But you're it. gonna have to balance that how many of your basic actions do you use to attack and just take advantage of his latent abilities and how many of the noise creation cards you use to mm. risk that the comeuppance coming your way. Exactly. And it's always that balance of... He's got so many dice being rolled, yeah. but again, the noise is being balanced out. With the, but the dice he's rolling is balanced out with the yeah. noise he's generating. So he's not subtle, but he's so much fun. So I think Arena was second. Do you want to yep. grab her card there? Oh no, wait, where, where did I put her? Uh, she's behind she's your behind your screen. Oh, there she is there. So, Irina was definitely... Now, so again, just to be very clear, uh, as every, you guys, well, everyone who's backed us before knows this. Uh, if this is your first time backing a campaign with us, you're about to learn. We always, always listen to, to backers' feedback. We listen to suggestions. We listen to criticism, whether it's positive, whether it's negative, constructive. We always listen to what you guys are saying. Um, and we take a note of all the ideas, even things that we can't put into Right Busters Season 1 with Project Real, for example. It might go into Right Busters, the 80s, my second version of the game that I really want. <laughs> I'm Everyone's keep, got afros. I'm going to keep saying it until it actually happens. <laughs> so Irina will indeed be having her skull altered. So the head is going to be re up to look more like the original Catalan art and we're going to be altering the face slightly to give her a, a more defined look and again more like the art because we want to really make her look although she's a stealthy and quiet and silence character we definitely want to embody the the strength that she brings um, in the art that Catalan has done for her because it's just it's just gorgeous it's really really um, strong the cheekbone lines and stuff I think we've just not got it right so we're going to improve that so, um, Arena, um, I'll bring it, oh, I need to see it myself, it's here. A sense of calm surrounds Arena, even the mist of combat. She is quiet and controlled, dealing with each new Nazi affront to, to reality with measured assurance. If she can avoid trouble, she will, but she is no coward. Instead, she plans her moves with great care, minimum fuss, and neatly executes any who get in her way. A Polsky? <laughs> Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. I'm not even going to try. I just, no, I I just had this sudden thought, and I, I regret saying this next, but uh, it almost feels like it's story time with Az. You know, like once a week, Stas should just read a you, chapter of a story, and Az sits I, in and just listens to you. I don't know if you. you were here during the Solomon Cain campaign or if you watched it, but there was a story time with Az, uh, <laughs> and it was good. Uh, there were some requests for me to do an audio book. Um, oh, really? Time, time's just tough. It was, I was going to read the short stories of Solomon Cain. Mm -hmm. um, well, so if you have any questions guys don't forget pop up in the Q&A and we'll make sure to come back to it at the end of the live so I guess like this would be on let's go this for is not uh, going to be surprising to anybody this this is really what you should yeah, expect I mean, a bit reason. of a twist coming up here I mean uh, I mean it comes with not one uh, but two silence pistols because she's got two in her hands I mean yeah so Again, this, you know, they say this is still uh, being being tweaked a little bit, but uh, you might notice that these pistols, uh, yes, they are ranged and they have zero noise with them, and that but is the, very powerful. But they only roll two attack dice. But which they only roll two seems, attack dice. Which seems per initially. Yes, but um, you might have noticed there's a keyword on there. If you put oh. that one back over there. So yeah, they've got the versatile key phrase, but you've also seen they've got the word precise. So that means uh, they are. Well, when you roll blank dice with these, it always counts as a hit, okay? So Yay. even if she looks like she's missing, because she's really accurate with these, she's really badass with them, if she you know, makes a hit with them, you know, even if she, does, you know, she's, even if she rolls two blanks, she's still guaranteed two hits. Yep. So she's kind of like almost like an assassin kind of mod, uh, character. So she's able to you know, take down those, um, those Nazi officers mm -hmm. if they're by themselves, yep. but when they got bodyguards, a bit more tricky. But that's not to say she's anywhere near weak because she's got these two pistols yep. and her deck has been tweaked and worked on to basically kind of incorporate the whole feel of having two guns so she's got a couple of abilities um <laughs> no prizes to point out the obvious error that's about to appear yes no prizes for the obvious typo guys 
and girls. I'm believe. totally putting out the I'm the dyslexic uh, excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so, jewel <laughs> wielding. <laughs> I think wielding spelled wrong as well. I think it's just a full on. It, 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 just, uh, just, she's dual wielding her pistols. Yeah. Or <laughs> so, jewel wielding. Uh, uh, okay, what does this do? Uh, Come so, on, you <laughs> sorry, I'm distracted by my You've got one job. My job is reading the chat and keeping them in line. That's what I'm here. If you want me to leave and you can just sit with the chat all night, you can just hear. I like the chat. <laughs> no, 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 no. I like the chat. Okay, what it allows you to do is allow you to split the damage from those attacks between multiple enemies. Again, yeah. so if you're rolling two dice and it doesn't just four damage, doesn't sound like it's doing a huge amount. Mm -hmm. But if you get some more big attack combos going on, you got some bursts, kind yeah. of, kind of uh, not bursts, sorry, uh, exploding dice happening. If you manage to pull together, say, a nine damage, mm -hmm. you can split those between two soldiers. Yeah. And that means you can actually take out two people. So not only is it versatile, and it's guaranteed to be getting blank results, it's almost like having its own personal burst. Because like a burst, which is that you split the, uh, the Thompson's gunfire between multiple targets, her dual pistol to her dual wielding, but she split damage between multiple Nazis. But it feels very different because with burst, mm. you're spending specials that you've rolled. Yes. Whereas with dual wielding, it's a passive it, ability. It's passive. So it's just it's so just taking always that splitting total. it. If you if want you, to, if you can imagine, if you can do enough damage, if you can roll enough hits to take out two targets, mm. you can. She's just like bam, 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 bam. Well, slightly. Pew, 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 pew. And this is this feels very, very. I played Irina today, actually, just today, for, I, I, time, I, yeah. for, for the first time. And the dual wielding ability and not exploding dice makes it super interesting. It's mm. a very, very um, different way of playing. And what was really cool is that I got to combine it with other skills from my uh, team card as oh, well, my, as well, from my team card, from the team Harrier ability, which made her feel even, even more swish. You want to talk about this one as well? Uh, yeah. So, um, might be a little bit hard to see in the white and yellow. So Sorry about that. This is a. Uh, very interesting one. So this one is for noise. Now it's kind of a you know not the clearest text in the world, but sleight of hand. Again, another typo. No prizes. I'm not very good at what? English. Oh, slight is spelled yeah, wrong. Slight is spelled wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, what that allows you to do is when you make noise, rather than the uh, noise dice exploding on that cr on that special star, you can actually spend that special star to draw two noise cards and pick the one you want to pick. So it's very different to uh, any other abilities, really. You know, it's, the only, it's the only ability that interacts with the noise deck in that way, where you get two mm -hmm. noise deck uh, cards. And you can choose the higher result, the one that's more likely or less likely to trigger, to trigger a, yeah. A, yeah, a spawn. So it's, it's only ever really used on, um, uh, on non-weapon tests, but her weapons don't make noise anyway. <laughs> So it's not being triggered by noise attack, it's been triggered by her actions. So uh, it's not like sleight of hand, why is the yeah. gun making noise? Because her guns don't make noise. Unc, so Unk has a little request. Now Unk, I, oh hello no, Unk. Just, just oh, wait, wait. I'm not looking. Wait. Hey, so, nice wall. So, so I believe, I, I believe you last time we were on live together, you did a bow and arrow noise. Do you remember? Did I? Yeah. Because Unk is requesting if you can do the kind of silence pistol noise. I did it a minute ago. Did you do it? Uh, I went, I went, I went, I went uh, you know, bam, 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 and I realized it's silence. I was going, pew, 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 I don't know, it's like a coughing silence that's like, pow, pow, isn't it? It's like a James Bond. That's all right, I can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, swear to God, if someone makes a compilation of all my noises, I will hunt them down so and give them a copy of Right Busters. Irina's deck, let's go. So yes, so you combine that with her, her silence. So she's very quiet. She's like a secret agent, kind of like a spy. Um, and so she's got these two very powerful feet cards and <sighs> they don't specifically do anything, like they don't really do attacks, you know, like how Bjorn was all like attacking everyone. Hers are passive kind of modifiers mm -hmm. and they're quite useful to pop off at the same time. But individually, they work as well. They work great by themselves. But if you put them together into one heroic giant turn, so you've got haunted by the past. So she's kind of, um, you know, uh, she's been Polish. You know, she's been through a lot in the war. Mm -hmm. So she's a bit more serious. So she, until her next turn, uh, every time you inflict a wound on a Nazi unit, you can make another attack on another Nazi unit in range. So not only are you able to split the damage between multiple uh, enemy uh, units. But you can, after you know, concentrating all your fire on one, move on to that next target. So you could take two down and move on to the third, take one down, move on to the second, move on to the third, and she can combo everything. We need an alternate sculpt where uh, Irina had a puppy that the mobsters killed. 
And <laughs> yeah, she's, she's pretty a, much she's the John assistant. Wick yeah. of Ragbusters. <laughs> uh, she's just she's mental. But she's got she's limited by range. Her pistols can only shoot one uh, to adjacent, so she can't be popping people off yep. from a distance to opposite side of the base. Mm -hmm. But anything in range, she kind of just does like a, a spin of death, nearly hitting ass in the face there. But she just does like a windmill of carnage, and everyone just dies. Yes, <laughs> I'm a little there. Uh, um, but you combine it with this one. And this gonna, one is, uh, I can never pronounce it, Kotwika. Kotwika? It's I basically, I don't know if it means know anchor in Polish. And basically, see, I, I think W's in Polish are meant to be V's. Kotwika? Kotwika. If someone's Polish, please correct me and say <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, but basically, it's it's anchor. I think it was the world in World War Two. was kind of like their um, emblem, kind of like their what was it, motto. I did some research. My brain's gone to mush. But basically, it allows you to roll an extra attack dice and an extra defense dice, re-rolling blanks. Okay, so bearing in mind, her blanks are always going to be hits. She can re-roll them if she wants to, to get the twos and the threes and the crits. She's getting the extra attack dice. She's splitting it between everyone. And once she's killing them, she's moving on to the next one. So from a design perspective, so no, <laughs> I know you're like the anime and tell us all about how all this feels and looks. <laughs> but from a gameplay perspective, you've given her two feats that rather than being... One-offs, um, as in yeah, like attacks, a... They're kind of like states of mind or the kind of like trying to say right i'm turning this on i'm putting myself in this state mm. and now i'm gonna go off yes okay she just kind of goes goes kill mode and off <laughs> she goes she just kills everything does she have a cuddle mode um not really i mean most <laughs> not of, really. i mean most of her cards uh is are been have been designed in this deck to basically combo kills together so yep. she kind of gets these kill streaks she's not the most powerful in terms of you know damage done yep. But she s just spreads it out. So high, high going. armor units are going to be a, a difficult thing for her to deal with. Yes. So things like the uh, Sturm Soldats okay. and, uh, and enemies like that are going to, you know, they're going to mm. shrug off a lot of these hits. You know Zombies saying? are a bit of a problem because if she's rolling free dice, unless she's rolling free uh, free hits, yeah. she's not going to be killing zombies. Uh, she's got to be rolling at least. You know, she's got to need seven to take down a zombie. So want, she needs a lot of damage. You want to mention at the minute, so again, this is very much still in playtest, but at the moment, like, what is Irina having to deal with when it comes to a Sturm so that like this one armed with the, the shield and hammer? Why is she so ineffective against it? Um, because these guys are, are armored, and while they are, like, they do have their soft spots, they are a little bit more squishy than, say, for example, um, a, like a real panzer, like a real or, like panzer yeah, yeah. or project x and stuff but these uh these guys the assault ones the ones with hammers they have a defense of nine they're currently the toughest thing in iron wolf's uh, roster yeah. of carnage and but they're death. also multi-wound too and they're also multiple wounds because this is something we had a lot of feedback from from folks who were saying oh the grenade's too strong and we have tweaked the grenade we've kind of moved it to items a little bit taken off a few cards but you have to remember the gameplay and the let's plays that we've shown so far have been the initial kind of first mission kind of your first raid your first campaign where you're just starting to find little bits of the real technology and what we're going to have in the next let's play is kind of getting into a bit more deep with that so we have the likes of the sturm so that's who have two wounds these guys in particular come in nine armor comparing that to a normal soldier soldiers at four armor or even uh, something like a i don't know like a, a dog is at five a zombie's at seven mm. these guys are rocking a nine which is not easy to hit which means when you're putting your team together you want to take arena with you cool you know rocket arena but now you have to think okay if we're taking arena in one of our slots what other heroes can we take to kind of help balance some of the harder targets yeah i mean well the, yeah. the other stems all that's these guys you know they're they're still tough they're not haven't got the same defense value as the assault stem soldats or the uh, the uh uh one of the shields because well they've got shields yep. but you know you see they've got, a, got like a cloth tunic front so they are you know they still have some armor there but it's not the, the best but they do have a very powerful attack and it's ranged so everything that's doing damage currently that you've seen is zombies uh, and the project uh 601 six 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 ones six X's, yeah. Uh, six X X's, they're doing you know six eights and stuff, but these guys are doing uh, attack then, damage. Yeah, because your, your normal zombies from a, a six, and they have to be on you. Yeah. But these guys, even if you kind of move away from them, trying to avoid the zombies, they're going to still be shooting you with a six attack. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty painful, especially when you've got you know two or three of them in a room shooting at you. It's just going to be hold on. Well, you'll be riddled hold, with holes. Hold on, David. Hold on. What's what he says? Bjorn and Tane's poses look too similar our berserk norwegian berserker screaming and our mid hacker maori come on dude come on 
Come on. To be honest, I'm hoping for some fan fiction where uh, Tane and Bjorn get together. Maybe open Aww. up a, a cocktail shop in Hawaii. Maybe they suntan each other up and play volleyball in their free time. I'm hoping that we get some, now, uh, some fanfic about these two. I also have to come up with an awesome name for that cocktail shop. Or bar. Oh, the... we now need a Maori meets Norwegian cocktail bar name. Leave it with you, chat. Yeah, well, you guys come up with something. <laughs> um, but yes, so, um, where were we? We were on about, uh, yeah, so she gets some um, soldats, you know, her pistols aren't gonna be the most effective. So you're gonna need another hero, which we're gonna come across in a moment, uh, to kind of teach those guys a few lessons. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, going back to her cards though. Um, so yes, we, have, we haven't really looked at her cards yet. So she's gonna excel at eliminating soldiers, uh, officers, dogs, some of the lighter units. And when she goes into that zone, she can really capitalize and mm. take out whole rooms of, of targets. Yes, so she's got a lot of attack, you know, say a lot of attack cards. She's got ones that kind of allow her to make more attacks, uh, make more powerful attacks. But she has got a few... Which, uh, which one do you want to do first? All, all three, because they're kind of all, all similar. All three at the same time? <laughs> Just, so, oh, hold on. I don't, hold <laughs> it's on. A bit of a, what are you doing to me here? I like to keep him on his toes. There we go, right. Okay, How so... <laughs> Hold on, I'm not, I'm not in focus. I'm so not, not only does she make attacks on her yeah, turn, you know what, you're just gonna have to. <laughs> she, and it's kind of interesting actually that we're starting with her and leading into Tane, because yeah. uh, you're gonna see something from Tane in a moment, but she's got an ability called Shadow. So interrupts yeah. happen out of turn. So they will happen when the Nazis are having their turn. Yeah. So if, if in this one it says, uh, make a plus one dice range attack on a Nazi unit that activates in your line of sight. Mm -hmm. So if they're on an adjacent space or they're on the same tile as you, yeah. you make an attack before they move. Yeah. So you're rolling three dice against these guys. Uh, and if you say it's a normal soldier and you've got your ability where you can make a kit, an attack after yeah. you wound someone, um, um, like or just like the feet, well, for this, example, yeah, this, well, this one here as well, yeah. she's then able to you know, make another attack. So she's able to continue her killing spree after her turn. Yeah, so but she, also- She's a really good fighting retreat kind of character. Yes, she, and she had the other one chain kill. So if she's not got the feet popped, it's another turn, she can then play that on top of the uh, action where she's interrupted. So she can really build up some out of turn combos and I do a lot of damage. I can be a testament to this because I used Ambush and Chain Kill today mm. as two zombies walked into my space and I moved away from them and took them both out with the two cards and it was epic. It gave you that feeling of her being able to kind of bob and weave and get either wait in the shadows for someone to come into her site and take it or when she starts getting into danger to kind of navigate her way out of it and take stuff out as she goes which feels just like a, a John Wick is yeah. the way in my it, mind it really sees is. it. It's kind of weird because I'm now I'm sorry, I'm talking to the to the camera and to you guys and it, it, I'm just getting lost in the gameplay moments these awesome <laughs> moments of, of being her when she kind of pulls away and fights them off and I, I've got to remember I'm talking to people. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, they love, I'm they not, love it. I'm not playing games in my head. Um, so yeah, so she's awesome. She combos them together. She's a bit of ambush in there, but a lot of just mm -hmm. clearing what's around her. So she's, she's that kind of thing where if you're just using your basic actions, you're just kind of drawing a few cards, you're building your hand, mm. you're waiting for that moment to pop a feet and then start yeah. wrecking. I love it. More, more your patience kind of waiting for them, the precise moment to deliver death, which I love. Very, very, very different feeling to Bjorn, who kind of wants to get in immediately start mm. taking a bunch of wounds, clear them all off and start going Just again. keep going. He, yeah, he wants to power through. He kind of holds them off, but you know, you don't want to take too much damage because if you take too many hits and you're surrounded, you know, they will kind of beat you down and, and capture you. So he, it's a balance between being this brick wall of just awesome beyondness, mm -hmm. but not being overrun to the point where they capture you. So you've got to kind of, do you push it to the free wounds? Do you take that, you know, do you risk taking that fourth one? Because if you take that fourth one, down goes beyond. And he's, you know, if he gets captured, he's got to get rescued by his other yep. teammates. So it's a bit of a balance. So how far do you push it? So two more heroes to have a look at. Hans oh. or Tane. Right, chat. Who do you want next? Hans or Tane? So we have our German turncoat with his Panzer Shrek. Or we have Tane, our guerrilla fighter in, in essence. Is that it's right? It's Yeah, he... he they both oh, bounce off. Wait till they choose. Wait till they choose. Hold on. They uh, both yeah. bounce <laughs> off of Irene in their own ways because... They pick up on, they both carry hands. on in different ways. Hands, everyone's still wanting some hands. Okay. Yeah, it looks like Hans is definitely winning this one for like, okay, let's have Come a on, chat he's, he's got about the, hands. He's got the Panzer Shrek, what can you not? Uh, well, we've already looked at his Panzer Shrek, but we, we'll, we'll throw it back into the mix. But you so, can do story time with us. Yeah. So some dark past, Papa Papa Hans Papa to the Allied cause, and he didn't come empty handed. 
His skills center on his understanding of the weaknesses of Nazi armor and his ability with the help of his Panzer Schreck to open the heaviest of tanks like a tin of peaches. A useful guy to have around. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Who wrote this? <laughs> What's in me? <laughs> there's, a, there's, an, there's an in company joke about tin of peaches that I'm going to have to find out who wrote this. <laughs> I believe it was the almighty Jake. That's epic. We uh, we bought far too many tins of peaches at Essen. I think we ended up with about three weeks worth of peaches brought back to the Paris office. Uh, and I'm just waiting to go to Paris again so I can eat them all because I love tinned peaches, man. Three <laughs> weeks of them specifically. But right. yes, uh, <laughs> uh, what did he say? He said so, fewer. So while you're looking at that, so Hans Panzer Trick, will it be limited in use? Does it, does it mean he got limited ammo? Well, it's going to tell you right now what keywords come with the Panzer Trick, which will help tell you how that works. Okay, so. Uh, as we covered earlier, it's a very powerful weapon. It's very noisy. It's got the boom, so it will, if you fire pre-alarm, it's going to be pushing the alarm up. So you've got to really, you know, unless you come across something really, really puts you in a desperate situation, you're not going to be one of being not going to be one of shooting that thing very often. But it does do a lot of damage. Um, and what it's going to be doing is armor piercing. It's pretty much your best way to be taking down things like Sturm Soldats, uh, Vril Panzers anything that's got armor, you know, that normal weapons are going to bounce off because armor in, this, in, in rag buses, you know, your normal pistols, your bows and arrows and stuff, are just going to bounce off. You're not going to be able to get through that armor. Mm -hmm. You need Hans and his Panzer Shrek to take down these guys. So well, what does that, what does that, in, in a gameplay sense, what does that mean? What does armor mean? Yeah. Armor means bang, bang, poof, poof. It's just going to bounce straight off their armor. <laughs> in the rules, <laughs> okay, so that's not going to be specifically in the rules. Okay, in the rules, when you look up armor as a keyword, after the colon, it's just going to come bang, 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 pew, pew, oof, oof. and you guys make up your own rule for armor. My team puts up with this every day. Uh, apologies. Okay, let me try that again. Armor means that your basic uh, weapons that haven't got the key phrase armor piercing will do no damage against it. You can no shoot damage? at it with your trench guns, point blank range on a tank, it's just going to bounce off. You're not going to get through. Wait, hold on. You're saying normal weapons don't do any damage against something with armor. Oh my word. Oh yeah. Oh my word. Oh yeah. You're going to want these real upgrades towards the end because uh, yeah, it's just you know your your bow taking down a real Panzer with a bow and arrow. It's never going to happen. A real powered bow and arrow, maybe, maybe, but yeah. So um, a real powered bow and arrow. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Um, but yes, so you're going to need these armor piercing to take these things down. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Sturm Soldats, while they're tougher, mm -hmm. um, they can be taken down by conventional normal weapons. Yes. But your Vril Panzers, you see that, you, you can just, just get out of there. Just run, unless you've got a Hans. What's the key thing to do with this and the amount of wounds they have? The other thing is also... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was getting to it. Were you? Oh, if they're not armored, <laughs> it does two wounds. So armored if things will do. If they're not armored, it will do two wounds. Yes. If it, if it, so are these guys armored? Uh, they are. Yeah, because they got they got the gold wounds. Um, they got two wounds, but they're two not wounds, armored. Are they? But they're not armored. Okay. So the Panzer Shrek would blow them to pieces. Okay, gotcha. Um, but the normal pistols will, you know, and stuff would, would struggle against them. But the the, the Panzer Shrek, the Panzer real Panzer, sorry, yep. they will have multiple hits as well. But so they will do one damage and have multiple wounds. Yes. You heard it here first, Vril Panzers, armor and multiple wounds. They say there's some things up for development still, so that <laughs> is possibly going to change. Don't quote me. I'm not a walking Bible. Um, quote him. Quote him lots. No, please don't, because <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'm going to get chased by Jake. <laughs> I actually, I, I just realized, and forgive me, because you mentioned uh, Steve earlier on, and I, I forgot to say, guys, give all your love. I'm not sure if Steve's oh, yeah, watching. If in he chat. is Steve's watching. Actually unfortunately in hospital at the moment and um, he's had a few a few complications and we just want to wish the best to steve i uh, hope steve i'm not sure if you're watching or not at home if you watch this later but um hope you wish you a speedy speedy recovery so we can get you back on camera because yeah. i realized that not having you two together will make me super sad because ed and ed and steve are just like the amazing show uh, <laughs> it's just it's just the best we we do bounce each other off each other in a very uh yeah it's more like a duo way where it's, yeah it's great on each other's it's like <laughs> duel wielding it's great um so yeah so steve if you're watching yeah. or not get well soon yeah. um anyway second weapon for hans no 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 go back to the, the, the panda shrek one of the key word i missed unreliable oh, yes yeah, so you did so someone said, has it got ammo? Now, we are tracking certain things with uh, these weapons as unreliable. So when you fire it, 
it will go out of action. It will be jammed. Now, currently it's got the unreliable only once, but it's going to be upgraded to having it twice. What? So basically it's going to be out, you got, it's going to have two jams. So it's going to take quite a bit of time to unreload it. Unreload it? Reload it. <laughs> You're not going to be taking the rocket out to fire it. This defeats the object. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at this. Okay, so yes, he's going to have two jam tokens on it. So if you don't roll the crits, um, the, the, the stars, sorry, the, the star icon, uh, it's not. It's going to jam. So if you roll one... Ah, uh, so, okay, this is... This you're going to need key. a lot of stars to keep it powered up. So you get this. Usually, you spend this to explode the dice, which makes it into two, and then you roll an extra dice on top. Yeah. But what you would do with Unreliable is you would spend this to essentially counteract the unreliable. Yes, yeah, so essentially you've got, f yeah, it's rolling four dice. You still get to keep the two. Yes. But you don't get to add an extra dice. So, because you're counteracting the unreliable. Yes, exactly. So what you'll do is you could put that dice on it and just remember that you've triggered one of it yeah. once. So you have to trigger the unreliable effect. So you have two of the stars, that's four damage, plus it will um, trigger, uh, you know, stop it from being out of action. Yeah. Um, the armor piercing is is passive, as is the unreliable. You've yeah. got to, well, I say um, it's passive. You've got to, to spend yeah, it yeah, not yeah. to get it. Uh, he does have cards in his deck that will allow him to spend stars in order to yeah. keep it in action. But also, I've put another card in there that will we do, counteract We that. have little, very simple tokens. Unfortunately, I don't have them to hand here at uh, Cossack. Somewhere. But we do have little tokens that just kind of let you mark a weapon as unreliable. Uh, sorry, make, let you mark a weapon as sort of jammed. Uh, jammed or, yeah, it's or, a pistol or with a thing around it. Yes. Super straightforward. Nice, cl nice clean iconography, just so everyone recognizes what it means. Um, do you want to talk about the second gun? It's quite simple. Though, yes. Really. So uh, this is, you know, uh, you will recognize this as a Luger. So German weapon. It is German you weapon. Have. So you'll notice what's different to this one compared to Bjorn's uh, <laughs> pistol, which have very similar stats. Mm -hmm. But where Bjorn's uh, pistol has uh, the double tap rule, uh, Hans's Luger is actually go down as accurate. So. It doesn't allow him to roll extra dice if he triggers it, but accurate's passive, so it's always on. So he can pick his targets out. He can aim for the officer at the back of the ranks of the soldiers. He can aim for whoever he likes and go for the soft, squishy targets. You know, you've got a, a tracking bomber in the middle of a cluster of zombies. He could pick up the tracking bomber. Mm -hmm. So it's a really useful uh, pistol compared to both the, the silence pistol and also the, the, the HDM and the Browning because you can pick out your targets. So it's not the most powerful, but it's excellent for taking out those officers, which is really important because officers give a boost, yep. bonus, defensive bonus to the soldiers around them. Um, Unk actually asked, does, uh, does any, oh, sorry, Ugi actually asked, does any weapon jam? No, and only weapons that have unreliable um, will have that chance of jamming unless you spend a special symbol to uh, yeah. essentially cover that up. However, when you start upgrading to real weapons, you're going to encounter that much more when you're rolling real dice, and these things are far more prone to things going wrong. Yes. So the unreliable trait is something you'll see more Which when you use more experimental stuff. Is why when, say for example, Irina's um, pistols when they go up to the real versions if they start jamming she's still got the second one to do the damage with so one's out of action but she's still able to keep going with that other pistol which is awesome because you know if say for example your real powered trench gun goes out of action you're down to your machete at that point which we'll come to in a moment uh, but she's still able to make those range attacks with her other remaining yep. pistol so that makes her really kind of awesome because you know keeps her out of those pickles and also if she's only got the one upgraded pistol and the other one's still basic that one can break and she can still continue shooting. So it keeps her active in the fight. And what, you give me a look. What happens when she gets into the pickles? <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna have a bad time. Okay, so if she loses <laughs> both pistols, <laughs> she's in a bad time. So at that point- If you're gonna get into the pickles, you're gonna have a bad you're gonna, time. <laughs> if you're, if you're, at that point, you're gonna use your hands. The, if you're amongst the pickles. Or the, or, your way out of there. Or the jam, uh, as we're talking about. She can still make unarmed attacks and they can still bounce off her other attacks. So she can still kill people based off her. Uh, punching. So let's see some of her cards. Oh, sorry, some of her cards. Some of Hans' cards. Sorry. We got oh no, we haven't got the skills yet. Okay. We are chewing our way slowly through this. I apologise. I ramble. Uh, we've got abilities over here. Sorry, the guys. Th this is this is an hour and sixty minutes. Leo is just finishing his intro about now. Usually, you're fine. Buddy. Usually, you're I, you know, fine. I started his first spoiler. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got two abilities. One's a noise one, and one's defensive. Uh, so we've got heavy infantry. So that is, they're both triggered on the special results. So heavy infantry allows you to spend your special, which is a two, yep. instead of exploding it and rolling a dice, yep. which might be a blank, it might be a three. It is a guaranteed three. So if you roll this, 
instead of exploding it? Instead of exploding it, stays as, it stays as a two. Oh, so, but yeah. it would basically count as having a three as well alongside it. So you ah, get another. So you, you essentially, instead of exploding it and rolling the dice, you yes. say, do you know what? I'm just going to get an extra three on top which means you don't get the chance of rolling another special and continually you know, adding more and more dice, but you take a guaranteed three. Yes, exactly. And you can, you can only trigger it once. You can't roll two specials and then have you know, four plus yep. six. Mm -hmm. uh, you can trigger it just the once. Yep. So you can still explode it if you had, because you, everyone rolls two defense dice. Um, so, you know, but it does give you that guaranteed. So it makes him very tanky. Yep. It makes him very useful. So he's heavy infantry, yep. literally as it says. Yep. And this other one is a this is this I love this this seriously is... love this because one thing we haven't really spoken about is, is how hands fits into the game. We looked at Arena. We talked about how well, we looked at Bjorn. Bjorn runs in, hacks and slash stuff. Makes makes limited <laughs> noise unless he goes to kill multiple kills and he starts mm. to make noise. Arena needs to get a few cards in hand. Needs to combo things together to be at her most effective, but is generally quite quiet. And then we have Hans, who's walking in with a Panzer Faust and a Luger. Bum, bum, yeah. bum, bum, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Um, one thing we haven't talked about uh, is, is how we balance that, which we're going to talk to in a second. But we also have a rule that's currently being play tested that every hero can make unarmed attacks as well, uh, which is just yeah, it's just it's just a swing. But you're only rolling one attack dice. Yes, the one attack dice. So um, it's very weak. Maybe you can suck a punch a uh, officer who's sure got a defensive sure two, so you can punch him down. Yeah. But you know, soldiers defensive four, you're very unlikely to take one down with a punch. So how do you deal with making a bunch of noise as hands <laughs> in this absolutely amazing way? So so when you're rolling your noise dice, yep. uh, say for example, you've smacked open a door, you roll two dice, and you've got a, a star and a blank. Yep. Okay, so that normally means you've got to explode and roll an extra dice, and the noise can cascade into fun town. Yep. Um, <laughs> You could spend don't, that stuff. Don't get into pickles, <laughs> otherwise you're not going to get to spend any time in cascading fun time. <laughs> you can spend that star to trigger Auf, Auf Deutsch. And Auf Deutsch allows you to re remove the suspicion or low, lower the suspicion level let's, of the nearest room. Let's play that out a little bit. So for example, if I've got, where is, where is Hans? Oh, he's over here. So for example, uh, we've got a bunch. Let's get rid of some heroes. Let's hide okay. a little bit here. Because this, this is such a different mechanic to any other hero you guys may have seen. So let's say we have Hans, we have Red Hawk, we have Claudine here. Oh, we, the... we have some enemies over there. Oh, that side. Okay, there you go. You got it? You got <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> so let's say they are suspicious right now, rather than alert. This okay, make more sense. So what happens is, as you're opening doors, as you're starting to to flick things open, um, rooms, adjacent rooms, and rooms a corridor so away can start to become uh, suspicious of you, which means you may see rooms uh, going from passive to zombies start rolling around. It's it's, it's carnage. <laughs> going from passive to suspicious, which is really threatening because it means when you finally open that door, they're already ready for you. They're already they points and flip over into alert. And they're going to start attacking you almost immediately, which which doesn't it rooms going to suspicious before you get to them means you lose that element of surprise, that ability to have a whole play around to deal with them before they start going into alert and start raising that alarm. Rooms becoming aware of your presence before you get there is a horrendously bad thing. So if you're firing a Panzer Faust, Panzer Shrek, sorry, they're going to be they're going to rooms are going to become suspicious. It's almost certainly going to happen. So what does off darts do? Oh, hold on, wrong, wrong camera. There camera. we go. So. When you open the door, you could trigger Auf Deutsch, and that basically means like you're speaking German. I would do, I would, I would do, I would, my impressions are bad. Anyway, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's just a German speaking, and it flips over <laughs> the alert token into suspicious mode. So it lowers the. <laughs> my friend. Ed, what does Auf Deutsch do? <laughs> It allows you to lower your suspicion level. <laughs> from lower alert. it! From alert to suspicious. To suspicious. Or from suspicious to... Gone. To, to pop. In my defense, my family's German. <laughs> Digging a hole, going down, see you later. That's another sign for the signboard, says Ash. Uh, so... Did everyone get that? Now I'm going to, going to pop quiz. Everyone tell me what Hans' special ability does in chat to make sure we got that clearly across. Oh, why do I wake up in the mornings? I feel like you're a trainee teacher and I'm like, in the, I'm like marking you at the back of the class as you're teaching people. There's a reason why I stopped being a teacher. This no is why Leo's theory. so... This is <laughs> it reduces the enemy to tears of laughter. <laughs> it makes the room even more gibberish. It makes you put on a bad German accent. It's, I currently can't hold myself upright from laughing. 
It makes you smoke something. <laughs> <laughs> what Bruno says, whatever you've smoked, he wants some. Um, it's called life. Bree says, "Big bada boom" is what is was what Hans's off Dutch does. You're all winners. <laughs> Give up. I think we did well. I think that's fine. Yeah. Serious mode. What, what the? What the? Any? Score? Hey, what's got- happened to Sarge? Sarge died laughing. He gave up. <laughs> Can't take these guys anywhere. <laughs> oh dear, says Jello. Oh dear, is about right. Okay. <sighs> anyway, so going on to his abilities, we're going to ignore the fact that I did any of that. Hold on. I love Hans's abilities so much. He's German. Do you know what? Let's see. Let's just pass that. Let's go screw it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so going on about his Panzer Shrek and it's unreliable. Hold on. Are we up to 4,013 backers? Are you seriously telling me that 12 new people are watching Ed right now? Amazing. Welcome, What's everyone. What's worse is 12 new people watched Ed and thought, hey, let's back this game. This guy's not unstable. <laughs> Anyway, let's just keep going. Let's look at some cards. I'm digging myself into a hole. I'm really good on camera. What are you typing? Nothing. Stop typing. I'm asking them to send help. <laughs> For me. <laughs> hats, my safe word. Apparently hats is my safe word. What was my safe word? I don't know. You, never... you don't need one. You're the threat. <laughs> so Panzer Grenadier is the first feat of hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is. So, um, basically, it's him being a heavy trooper. You know, he's, he's putting his kind of skill into it. He's a Panzer Grenadier, essentially. So, in, it's a passive. It's just until his next turn, he rolls an additional attack dice, an additional defense dice, and he rerolls blanks. So, basically, it's, very, it's quite similar to Irina's in a way, but where she's being silent and stealthy, he's being the exact opposite. He's being loud and noisy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Perfect. I think I summed it up quite well. Um, <laughs> so, it's, yeah, a passive. It just makes him... This, Badass, awesome, you know, person. Okay. I'm being restrained right now. That was good. The and then you've got feet? Achtung. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't last long. Is that spelled correctly? I don't know. <laughs> I've just claimed my, oh, whatever. Anyway, uh, basically, so we said we've got the unreliable tokens <laughs> on your Panzer Shrek. And in this case. Uh, yeah, it really should have an edge. Oh, look, look at the pretty art of Catalan. Look at the pretty art. I'm dyslexic. Let look me, at the pretty oh, art. I think I am dyslexic. Yeah. It's okay, don't worry. Anyway, allows him to ignore <laughs> any unreliable effects. So even if his Panzer Shrek is out of action, yep. he plays yep. that down and he's just like, bam. And you can make two attacks. Bam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he just goes to town with it. It's very noisy. So this is Sarge's grenade times two. This yes. is, I want to blow up the world. It's time to set off the alarm and I'm going to do it by blowing up two things. Yes, instantly. And it's worth noting that though his weapon, his Panzer Shrek, does make a boom. It's not the same boom as a grenade. It's not an area effect. This is actually an armor piercing direct shot on a single unit, right? Yes, on a direct unit. So the, the noise, that little marker, is, it's, it's a boom icon. That's for the noise. It's not yeah. for the actual... Um, it's going to be explained more clearly in the rules rather than in edisms. Um, oh, who wants an edisms translated rulebook? That would be freaking amazing. Oh, <laughs> an edisms rulebook? I, even I would barely understand. I am so, we've already had requests, people asking us for the Reich Busters RPG. I think you should write the rulebook for the Reich Busters RPG. There will be so, much, so many sad. bang, bang, poof, poofs in it. That's, that's what you want from a role-playing game. And bad accents. Yeah, that's what, does anyone disagree with that? Come on. Like seriously, I'm bad accents and someone. sound effects. Um, Yes, very quickly I will say, these are very much prototype, just printed quickly. We will not have these kind of typos in the final version of the game. I know someone was, was saying in chat there, um, despite the, the German having a silent etch, we will have that corrected, don't worry at all. Thank you for pointing out my mistakes, I appreciate it. <laughs> but this is a really well, useful... They're not pointing out, we're putting them under camera, close and zoom, it's not their fault. They could, they could close their eyes and ignore it. <laughs> anyway, continuing on, very useful card for the Panzer Shrek. The German engineering? German engineering. Everyone so, knows it's the world's best. This is Audi, right? Remove any jammed weapon tokens from all weapons. Oh, wow. So basically... As in his own or other people's as well? No, for his own. His own. So basically... Uh, oh, that's a good question, actually. I never thought about that. Ooh. 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 Ooh can he repair other people? No, that's Ooh. what a Botchka's job, isn't it? Repairing other oh, people's maybe. stuff. Maybe. It's a good point, though. It's a prototype. That could change. But right now, it'd be, if he's got two jammed tokens on his weapon, he can just go boop, boop, take them off. Boop, boop, boop. And he can fire it again. You know, brilliant German engineering. Just keeps going with that Panzer Shrek. Uh, what's, what's amazing is I kept the camera on the car, but I really wish I hadn't because you missed Ed firing his Panzer Shrek. If you want to. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> what have I been eating today? What have you had, meatballs? Is that Eddie, sugar today? Hmm? Is that sugar today? No, I haven't actually. 
I've been on a just a natural high. It's a natural life is a natural high. Hold on, you spent a lot of time on your three D printer today, didn't you? And you were priming minis. There were a lot of. You were priming minis. There were a lot of chemicals. Were you priming minis indoors? Oh well, I'm not supposed to. Now we know. Now we know. That's not my fault. It was a poorly ventilated room. <sighs> right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, anyway, I'm gonna get HR. <laughs> I didn't even have to get HR onto you. Ben just went no, no. Ben, he's been caught an absolute crook. It's all right. Ben. My last head of department couldn't stop me either. Ben is HR plus planning plus uh, logistics plus project management plus Kickstarter plus advertising guru. Ben is everything, but importantly, he's HR slash health and safety, um, which means no. Hi, Ben. Bad <laughs> I didn't realize he was watching. This chat is getting out of hands. Oh God! Get away! Well, actually, actually, I'm going to show off some uh, some cards. But firstly, oh um, yeah, no, come on, just no, 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 forget no. the rule cards and just show the cards with the puns. Come on! What if he's? Come on! Come on! <laughs> so, <laughs> so make two melee attacks on two Nazi units in your area because you're giving them a hand. But, but bear in mind, okay, he's got a Luger and a Panzer truck. He has no melee weapon, yep. so he's punching them <laughs> with his arms. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> and and if he, he, he doesn't want to use two hands, instead he can. <laughs> Look, no hands. <laughs> I haven't been drinking, I promise. Ben, it is the fumes. We need some ventilation in that office. Is there going to be gloves for these hands? Actually, well, no, we're looking at sneakers, weren't we? Sneakers, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not for his hands. If it's, I'll stop. Anyway, it's for his hands, his feetsies. I don't know. His feetsies. His feetsies. Where does the queen keep her armies? <laughs> Upper <laughs> sleeves. Uh, anyway, but yes. Um, and then the other card, which was I don't. Think oh, it's, anyone it's cares done. about the rules anymore, man. It's done. That's and Hans, and boys and girls, and ladies and gentlemen. That's Hans. <laughs> Let's just move on. It's hands free. Uh, <sighs> Remember, send, send these puns to ed at mythicgames.net. Ed at, ed at mythicgames.net, guys. Um, well, we're not gonna, no, we're not renaming hands. Hands is definitely. Uh, this is real hands on work. Oh, yeah. No, uh, Sasha, we're not having an internal contest for the worst puns. Ed is playing a competition with himself. And the Discord chat. I'm pretty sure the Discord chat is also involved. Also, my favorite card for hands, actually, it's not, it's not going to pun to it. But it's, uh, it's it's one called Blitzkrieg. Okay. Um, you've, you've, you've now it's just it's just move one and make an attack. But the kind of image that goes through my head is everyone's so familiar with the Nicolas Cage film. Is it the, uh, the Wicker Man? Yeah. Yeah, where the scene where he's dressed up as a bear and he just runs up in slow motion. I'm just kind of imagining Hans doing that, uh, and he runs forward and it's a guaranteed free hit. So he's <laughs> if you can single out an officer <laughs> with a punch, you just kind of slow motion bear running up to an officer. And you just smack him in the face. Ed, I'm sorry. What? No one's listening. Everyone is focused on the fact that Blitzkrieg should be one word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dyslexic. All right, stop that. Shh. No more. Anyway, yes. So, um, yes, he's good, he's good at punching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't feel bad. Everyone loves it. Guys, uh, give, uh, give Ed some love. Uh, anything else you guys want to see? Uh, we need to do Tane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where is Tane gone? Uh, oh, he's here. Oh, yeah, he's there. All right, Tane. All right, buddy. Get him in here. Hilarious. Oh, Mark says, sorry, Ed. I don't know what for, but he says, sorry. It's all right, Mark. I don't feel bad at all. No. I live with this on a daily basis. You live what? With me. Uh, oh, I see. No, but don't, honestly, in, in all seriousness, where's his card? Uh, That's his, it. His oh. hero card. Um, in all seriousness, though, these are obviously things we've thrown together quite quickly. He's so we can get a the laptop. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Story time. Um, we obviously did the speed, the speed gameplay video, and there's a lot of requests for another full one. So we're going to very much try to make this happen, which is why we printed out a bunch of this stuff quickly to, to do it. And Ed did all the work on. on I'm kind of glad so. that it was all fast forwards and you couldn't hear me talking throughout the game. I know. I'm nervous tomorrow about doing uh, one where I don't get to fast forward through your. Uh, my accent. Things you say. Yeah. <laughs> I was French for that game. Very French. Lots of wee wees and sacre bleus. There was. In very feminine voices. So, Tane. 
Tanis Hacker is an amazing sight and transfixes foes every time. At least it does when he shows himself. Mist of the t- most <laughs> mist of the time. Most of the time, his enemies are dead before they even realize he's there. If you're off to set an ambush, call Tane first. I don't well, know. I, don't, I have no idea what that I, was. What's the about? I, I don't know. <laughs> we, but we both synchronized like that. That was like a yeah. We we'll got a little harmony, like a barbershop much, quartet going on over here. Spending too much time Ooh. together. No. Right. No barbershop. Weapons. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jumping ahead of myself. I just get so excited by Tane. So. Machete, machete. Yes. Pretty straightforward. It's the most straightforward yeah, of all the it's weapons. Super, super boring. It's just three dice. Doesn't make a lot of noise. It's 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 a nice little weapon. It's good just for smacking people in the head, slash body. Machete. Uh, does nothing special. I mean, if we could get like Danny Trejo's face etched on it, I would be elated. Do Danny DeVito. Danny Trejo. Oh, the guy who played Machete in the movie. Oh, Machete. that would be cool. <laughs> A bit better than Danny DeVito's face, although we love Danny I DeVito. I don't know, Danny DeVito. But that would, Danny terrifying. DeVito from Friends, where he dressed up as the policeman stripper, or from Twins, where he played Arnold Schwarzenegger's twin. I've just got an image of Danny, uh, Danny DeVito in a top hat and a machete chasing me down the corridor Oh, you're now. penguining it now, are you? Oh, penguins. With the monocle? Anyway, right. You're drawing me into your tangents now. <laughs> but to counteract his, uh, oh, you know, it's, 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 the machete, it's bog standard. He has got a trench gun. Now, the model uh, is yes. being changed because we are aware that there is a Thompson in the back, but it's being changed to a trench gun. Look at how these match, folks. Look at how these, look at the sculpt <laughs> match in the art. Look at us. We're amazing. No, as Ed says, we are indeed going to be We're in development. We're awesome. awesome. But, okay, this, again, it's got a very limited range. It only does adjacent, the like, pistols. But it is, uh, it's a bit loud, but it is doing free. Um, uh, attack dice and it's lethal so it's re-rolling blanks mm. so unlike um, say for example the Thompson which can't be used when you got on the same space as an enemy mm-hmm. the shotgun can you know zombies point blank in your face it's like brains <laughs> kind of thing blowing yeah, their the brains shotgun up. shooting the zombie shooting me you want me to be the zombie is that what you need it's like a brain well the zombie's not going to go brains and <laughs> blow its own brains out <laughs> yes brains yep yeah, <laughs> that's a really bad shotgun Okay. Anyway, he's really rolling those blanks, so he's pretty much gonna be hitting with that thing on the same space. Uh, it's very lethal. It's a little loud, you know. Even when the alarm's going off, you're gonna hear him shooting away with that thing. So, it is a very powerful weapon, very lethal, more yeah. lethal. Uh, it's you know, it's, on, it's like a it's like a ranged machete yeah. uh, axe. Um, Did you just describe a trench gun <laughs> as a ranged axe? Stats wise, yes. <laughs> They're both going to hurt when you hit in the face of it. <laughs> and this is the last I was ever on alive. <laughs> I think this is actually going to be the first, this is going to be like version 0.1 of the Ed Lies, where we're just going to put a camera on you and it's going to let go. And it's going gonna, gonna, gonna to pull your string and I'm just going to walk out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that could work. It could also be the start of your slow mental decline into uh, madness. I don't know. I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> it was pretty quick. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> digging down here. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. So, what do you want to do? You want to talk about skills? Um, yes. Yeah, so, shotgun does boom. Um, uh, it skills. Doesn't do boom, does it? It goes shoots loud. The abilities on the other hand are where he gets a bit more interest. Well, a bit more interesting. He gets even more interesting. Tano's one of my favourites. You know, he's a very, he's a very. Sell it to me, Ed. Sell it to right. me. Right. So he's evasive. What does that mean? It means he's got the wrong icon on it. <laughs> <laughs> when he's okay. in defense, uh, when he is a, attacked by um, the so Nazi units, this, this should it be, should be a star on there. When he rolls a star, it allows him to move one space. Okay. okay. So if he's an attack, he's got like a lot of zombies on him, loads of attacking aggressive kind of things, or he's even been shot at. Mm-hmm. If he rolls that star, he can move one away out of a combat. Yeah. He's ev- evading the fights. Yeah. So he's very maneuverable. He's in their faces, but he gets away from all the fights. Um, <laughs> Elias says, is he abusive if he does not answer directly? Yes, Tane should run a Kickstarter. <laughs> 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 uh, tickled me. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> it was Elias. Oh, it was. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, yes. So if he's in the, like a horde of zombies on him and he's being shot at by an officer, you know, an officer shoots him for, for four damage and he rolls a star, dodge yep. all damage, he also gets out of the fight with the zombies. Cause so he's he, able to move? He's able to move away from the fight. So dun, dun, dun. that allows him to, uh, you know, he takes a lot of aggro towards him and he can just go 
bonk out the way and they can't get him because he's moving out there. Don't you think Teddy? No, 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 no. I was, uh, I was defending you. He said uh, that Ellis's joke was the best, the best all night. And I said, oh, too mean, Mark. No, no, no. Your jokes you, have been good. Yeah, yeah. Marky jokes have been good. Ashley's have been good as well. Ashley special. Yeah, Ashley special. He's, anyway, he gets out the fights, you know, away from all the problems. So he's very evasive. He kind of dances around the fights. And while I was trying to get with um, Tane's. <laughs> Did a bit of research into... Uh, is this your hacker? Is it, is this, was that your hacker? Comes the hacker in a minute. Yes, he does do the hacker. Um, you know, I was looking at, you know, Maori war uh, culture was a lot of ambush, a lot of war yep. parties, a lot of very aggressive, but also kind of hit and run, attacking, getting in and getting out. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm trying to capture him. So he gets into the fight and then he gets out. So he's not a tank, but he can dodge a lot of the damage. What? Are you Because I'm just <laughs> it's good. very animated. I just... <laughs> kind of want to see you dancing, kind of want to see you fighting, kind of want to see you infiltrate the Nazi bunker. <laughs> I guess all. I was dancing earlier. Anyway, so that's that one. That's what Vasive does. <gasps> and. Don't look. But Rob Griffiths has come up with quite possibly the most amazing pun in the world. Okay. He's going to give. We're going to give Tane the ability to dance the Hakarina. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hakarina. It's going in, right? It's got to go in, right? Email it to me. I'll put it in. Email it to ed at mythicgames.net. Oh, oh. <laughs> Next one. Unnerved. Unnerved. This one's another one. Okay, so, you know, uh, it's all about the hacker, unnerving, screaming. Ah, lots of, you know, very loud. And yeah, So when he rolls attack, okay, if he can spend one of his special star results yeah. to make all adjacent Nazi units mm -hmm. move one away from him. <sighs> So if he's in almost the middle of like fight, they're unnerved, almost as if they're unnerved. So as he's in, screaming. So this, this should say unnerving then, right? Because he's not unnerved. Fine, unnerving. Yes, okay. he's not wrong. Just <laughs> Someone will proofread all my English at some point. Uh, uh, but yes, yeah, so he's basically, and uh, which is really useful. So if you're in the middle of a room and you need to clear a path for so your allies to get out the escape, he's yeah. screaming, shouting, and moving around and okay. fighting. Uh, and he can then knock people aside, mm -hmm. you know, and clear a space for people to run through. Also very useful if they're shooting at him and he can push them out of range as well. Uh, yeah, so it's all very kind of, or he could push them into his friendlies, his, mm -hmm. his own team, and allow them to get in there. So imagine Bjorn standing there in his little space, happily swinging his axe away, mm -hmm. and then Tane then unnerves them to the point where they yep. all move away into his space. And then he hits them with the axe a bit more. You know, it's some really nice combos you can get yep. off these guys. I just answer a quick question. Yes, because it's versatile, it means it can hit in the same space. Yes, point blank, bang, bang, shoot, shoot. Yeah. Versatile tends to be more condensed weapons that you can do at close close range, not like, not the likes of a Thompson, more like your pistols, more like your shotgun. Yes. Um, okay, shall we get into Tane's hero deck? Well, I think that one's the most appropriate since we uh, mentioned yeah. it a minute. We, we have to show this one. This, this was going to have to be in there. <laughs> but this this card is epically interesting because it's it's... A taunt, but it's also uh, fear-inducing, but it's very strategic when you're playing the game. And it's not quiet. No. You can't be popping that in the first rounds. So what could. does it do? What's it do? Uh, so it, it creates a boom. So you kind of stood there in the middle of the room doing the hacker. You know, you're screaming, uh, and you play it down there. And, well, if it's pre-alarm, the alarm gets pushed up. But if it's post-alarm, till the end of, your, uh, end of the round, so if you're the first play mm -hmm. player, you've got four turns of this. Yeah. Nazi units may not activate on the same tile as you. You may not be targeted for attacks, and the hacker ends if you draw a wound card. So that basically what this means is you're in the middle of the room, people are coming towards you, they're coming to attack you, and they just see you just going to town on the hacker, and you're screaming, and you're doing all these hackery gestures. So literally, gestures. if he's just being swarmed by, by soldiers, soldiers, Sturm Soldats come in there to bonk him on the head. He basically whips just goes, out and, and terrifies them into doing nothing yeah they kind of just then they go ah! <laughs> and then they get a bit upset and a bit scared so he kind of stands there and he pins down a room for a whole round okay to counterbalance that a little bit and this happened once the very first time i ever play tested uh the hacker someone put a grenade into the room <laughs> blowing up everyone including so you, myself you, so you held everybody in place yes uh, i pinned them down and then they got blown up yeah instantly so they couldn't attack me but because I took the wound, the hacker did end. I've been grenaded. I'm no longer going to be doing my hacker. But essentially, it allows you to pin down for an entire round all the enemies that come towards you, and mm -hmm. they can't shoot you. But if anyone takes a, a moment of opportunity to kind of go and just lob a grenade in there and kind of laugh, gonna, yeah. it's going to end it. So, it, you know, it, it's, it's a little balanced in that sense. But, yeah, it's very powerful. Because if you've got a choke point mm -hmm. and all these guys coming in, 
you, you put need to cover your exit. And you you put Tane down there. You need to hold a, yeah, hold an yeah. area. You put Tane into that choke point, and you let your other teammates escape, and he can kind of take one for the team and kind of buy you the time you need to kind of get away from the guys chasing you love down. It. And also, it. he's evasive. So once he's finished his hacker and he's fighting his way out, he just starts bouncing away from him and he starts yeah. kind of falling back naturally through his defense cards. Mm -hmm. um, Wicked. But also, another really cool one I from him. He plays so, so, so differently to the other three heroes. He's very unique. And this is probably one of his la last ones that kind of are on his turn. This is one of my favorite feats in the game. I saw this for the first time today and loved it because it's exactly how I'm... Look at that happy face staring out of at you when you play Warpacati. You see that smile. It's getting blurry. It's getting very blurry. <laughs> but yes, so this is, a, this is a really useful one when he's with other people. They don't have to move in the same direction. Yep. It just says all heroes in the same tile may move one, and you may perform a plus one dice attack for each hero that's moved. So that's an attack for every hero, or an extra dice on your attack? That is a extra attack. So if all four heroes move, including yourself, you get four attacks. That's with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. That's with your machete, nice. and that machete, which is you know three dice, becomes yep. four dice, becomes a little you know a little bit more awesome. Yep. And that shotgun, you know, that's already a, a lethal weapon. Four yep. attack dice with that shotgun, ranged. I'm too old for this. Blowing them to pieces. Yeah. So he really benefits from supporting the team, being with the team mm. early, and then later on, he's really good at holding down areas and letting his team get away before he then dodges yeah. and runs. Um, I am not exactly to what you mean. I don't know what that is. What are you getting for me? Um, don't make me hold four cards on camera, Ed Harrison. I'm, I'm trying to find a this is a fifth one. <laughs> No, I took I took a few of them out. Um, so Ed, 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 what you I'm just showing. What, what? Tane is the most <laughs> interesting to pl well, not the most interesting. Uh, he's very interesting. He's very very unique, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, as as heroes go. No, it's just not gonna happen. Just put them down. I don't need to read them as such. But he's got four <laughs> interrupt cards, which makes him which is more than anyone else has got. Four interrupts for things to do whenever a Nazi's yes. take action. So he's all about ambush as well. So I was trying to capture the spirit of these surprise attacks, you know, this yeah. kind of these war parties. And he just goes in there and he's killing people. But when the Nazis activate around him, you, uh, when they enter his tile, they activate his line of sight, they move to attack him, he can then make his own attacks. Mm -hmm. So even when it's not his turn, he's doing things. He's, you know, he's holding down with the yeah. hacker, he's falling back. And when they're attacking him, he's attacking back and he's taking all these hits at them. And he's acting a lot out of turn. Um, and so he's very much, you're not just playing him on your turn, you're playing him in between everyone else's turns as yeah. well. And that means as, as, as uh, Tane, mm -hmm. you don't have as much downtime. You are, you know, you haven't got as much to do on your turns, yeah. but your turns kind of spread out amongst the whole round. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes him very unique because, you know, it's like, oh, the, the Nazis are activating and I'm making an attack yeah. and you can kill them before they can kill you. Represent that guerrilla kind of fighter, that kind of getting in or in and out, that kind of mobile, that kind of agile, because he's just, he is very lightly, obviously, he's essentially topless bars on ammo packs. Like, he's meant to be versatile and amazing. Exactly. Oh, well, I'm giving them to you. I'm just going to hold them up a little bit. Um, well, I was just trying to show that, you know, to counteract the fact that, again, his machete is uh, <laughs> a little bit weaker. Oh, I see what you're showing. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at those modifiers. He's got guaranteed hits, plus with uh, ones that also give him plus two attack dice. So he's just piling in the damage. He's doing these surprise attacks and he's just smacking them left and right and he's falling back and he's screaming at them. <laughs> he's just, he's very different to anyone else. But again, this is kind of a risk reward. This is because each card you obviously choose the top or bottom. So this mm. one would let you remove a wound or move one and make a melee attack or this would make you deadly and add in that automatic three. Yeah. So you, you do have to choose when you're going to use this, when you're going to sacrifice your damage to look after yourself. Yes. Um, the 3D doors, unfortunately, I actually do not have them here because we were playtesting with them today, actually. Yeah. Um, so we will show them in a future stream again. Um, talking about them, they're just awesome. They really lift the whole the whole table. They make the entire thing just look and feel really good, especially when you're opening the doors. And it just gives you a nice visual representation of all the difficulty of all the doors because they're all very clearly notified uh, or sort of not notified, uh, sculpted with, with the, the, the lights, one, two, or three, so you know the level of your doors. The mm. doors just really add to the entire tabletop experience. 
for Tommy Oldham. That's yeah. I mean, he's got some other more unique cards, like his hit and run and his unnerving scream. But that's pretty much the gist of him. Uh, he does do some war chants, which give him modifiers to everyone in the room with him. Okay, cool. So he's kind of chanting away, doing all his little hacker noises, yeah. and so he's kind of a supporting gets... character. Although he's quite fighty, he has a lot of ways of benefiting and helping. He might be a good replacement for Sarge, for example. He's the guy you want to kind of have in a room to hold these choke points and kind of be the center of a defense. Yeah. He's there to kind of help you kill people and he bounces around and he just moves around the table a lot. He's really moving around, evading, getting stuck in, falling back when yeah. things feel a bit aggressive, surprising the, the, the patrols that kind mm -hmm. of come out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and he's very much support, um, but very aggressive. He's like a really aggressive support. You know, he's just, he's everywhere. And mm -hmm. he's kind of hard to keep track of. He's just like, oh, he's over there now. Oh, he's over there now. Oh, he's killing that guy. Oh, he's now screaming at someone. <laughs> um, and he's, yeah, he's very different to anyone else in the game. Yeah. And I wanted to kind of capture that kind of more tribal, more surprise war party kind yeah. of feel with him. And well, he was quite hard to get to work. Well, now he's now he works, yeah. and he's awesome. I, he's, I love playing him. Him mm -hmm. and Hans are my are two of my favorites. So we've had Hans, we've had Arena, uh, we had Bjorn, uh, and we had Tane. So I want to know, guys, who you like in the sound of the most? So obviously, with Arena, we had the the Jules Silence Pistol, suppressed pistols, and um, where she's coming in and using lots of attacks to combo, take out lots of light enemies and clear entire rooms. Do you like Hans? He's going to be really good at taking out the big, solid, um, the, the armoured or multi-wound targets. Um, and he's going to be the one that's going to be able to abuse his, uh, well, or make a, take advantage of the fact that he's from Germany and use his Earth Dutch ability to keep the rooms from going alert or suppressed. Um, um, or are you a fan of Tane or Bjorn? Bjorn, our Norwegian berserker, he's going to be smashing in, adding lots of extra dice, using his lethal and his rays to multiply all of those. Or Tane, more like your fast-moving support character who's in dodging around and dealing lots of damage when he needs to but supporting and holding down the front lines when he needs to as well so they actually Tane, Tane, four Tane, very unique Bjorn. ones Ashley says Bjorn is cool but the Panzer Shrek wins out has to be hands <laughs> uh, Allard says Viking every day Reese says Tani for sure um, mm. so the, the, the idea is that the heroes are all going to play very very differently and when you combine your heroes with a team and when you put those up against a faction or a map or a mission you're going to have to really look at what objectives you have to deal with before you pick your team ahead of time plus one for the Aussie more people wanting LZ uh, <laughs> Dothorian wants Arena's phone number um, if you can call back to 1945 yes you can have it uh, <laughs> Viking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to hopefully be filming a new Let's Play and um, we're going to play through with these four heroes on a new mission against General Wolf's, uh, Wolf's faction um, so we can show you guys a little bit more of the gameplay and we hope to have that out before the end of the campaign, all being well is what we'd really like. So hopefully you guys can take a little bit of what we're dived into away. A little bit of Ed's custom house rules, and it'll give you a bit of insight for when you're watching the video. So did, did they want me to talk in the Let's Play, or shall I remake, shall I'm I button it for a bit? a gag, for sure. Right, I'm going to go through the Q&A. If you have any questions... Oh, God, yeah, we've got a Q&A to go. Stick, uh, it's all right, we're only at two hours. We've got another two hours to go. Oh, yeah, um, we don't need to eat and sleep. So I am Hank Marvin. So Q&A is up here, guys. If you have any questions, get them in now, because I'm going to start going through them. We've got quite a few. Come on. Um, what does that okay. even mean? So Unk said... If I understand correctly, uh -huh. you said that most minis are prototyped through 3D printing. Are you allowed to tell what printers you use and how high is the quality nerdy drooling? Ed, this is all you, buddy. Okay, so, uh, well, no one said I can't, so uh, you can't stop me now, Ben. Um, yeah, so we use a Formlabs Form 2. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic 3D printer. The resolution we get down to is we're currently printing at 0.25. Uh, what, uh, what were these done at? Can you remember? Uh, I think... Because these the are... Some sold that was done at 0.1 uh, But the, these, these aren't... Yeah, this, this isn't the finest print that we can do. No. This is just to get something... Finest the print we could do... I think the zombies were up there. I think the, they, no, I, I think, think Red Hawk was. Red Hawk's a good example, actually. Yes, yeah, I think she was 0 0.025. Again, all my measurements mixed up, and Steve's going to be sat there in hospital listening uh, and rolling his eyes because, you know, I claim I've been using these for years and I can never remember the unit's measurement. But yeah, 0 0.025 is the lowest we can go to uh, using grey resin. Um, uh, yeah, so it's a, form, it's a Form 2. It's a fantastic machine. And I've been using the Form 1 uh few years back and that was fantastic but this blows it out the water it's an awesome piece of kit we've only got the one in the 
UK office, but yeah, look at the details. The poor little, yeah, the little thing. She chugs away quite merri uh, merrily. What's she called? She's called Quiet Swan. Is our 3D printer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's even. She's got a name. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can even see and all what, the little details. What else did he say? He said. Uh, how to get this high quality? Yeah, so it's just we just set it to the low, to the highest res possible, which is 0.025. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's going to take uh, 22 hours at, at sometimes yeah. to print some of the things out. It just takes a long time, but yeah. the quality is so worth it. Um, how long do you think it would take to print uh, a Red Hawk? I mean, again, the thing is, when Individually? You, fill, you fill out your bed if possible, because generally with the 3D printer sort of going back and forth, you want to fill out your bed. So you normally don't print one minute at a time. You normally do like four or five, depending on the angles you need to place them at. Um, if you go for the highest detail, you're talking like 15, 16 hours at least. If you go for I think for the single miniature, yeah, between 12 and 16 hours, depending on the miniature. Depends on the mini, depends on the, because again, the thickness and thinness, uh, the, the girth of the mini um, and, and the level of detail. I'm such a teenage boy. Uh, <laughs> Sasha said, when can we see Project X on a tile to get a feel for its size? Sasha, I'm very much hoping that the next Leo Live or possibly the one after will have Project X. They're printing it in Paris because they have two 3D printers. Mm. So they're able to dedicate one and I mean this generally, they're able to dedicate an entire 3D printer to getting the components ready for a prototype Project X because the thing is huge. Mm. It's huge. I mean, what's the scale of it? It was like, because you got Sarge next to the real panzer, which the real panzer is yeah, like that we, we big. We have no way of it. And then Project X is like that big or something. It's, 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 it's a beast. It's, it's, it's mad. I'd love to see it next to the dragon. Um, I can't uh, wait for Leo to do that. Oh, if we could do the real pan or the Project X riding the dragon. Just <laughs> uh, Andrea says, hello. <laughs> would like to say thanks for your great Kickstarter campaigns. Thank you, Andreas, for being here. Honestly, I think a lot of people were worried it's only 10 days, you guys are mad, but we never stop connecting and talking to you guys. Even when we're not on live, we're doing stretch goals. When we're not here, we're doing videos, we're trying to release content. We never want to stop this connection and community with you guys. So thank you for being here as well and, be, and being part of the, the questions. It, it means the world to us. Um, and I, I, I generally mean that having these chats with you guys help us come up with fun ideas. They give us a, a bit of energy. And, and every time we do it, it's just a, a real blast. So thank you. Yeah. So if they were not talking or communicating, it's probably because they're trying to gag me or hiding from me in a cupboard sure. somewhere just to get away from my yeah. accents. The, uh, the Discord has, has warmed to Ed in a very special, special, special way. I was chloroformed of a night. <laughs> was it by Ash? Um, Thorian said, oh, sorry, Andreas sorry, also said, is Project X a unique mini or can we purchase more of them? You can purchase as many uh, Project Xs as you like. Absolutely, you can. Um, if I'm honest, we're probably really going to be building the mission around it and the readmissions just for one. Mm. But... But we are putting the, the t we're going to be putting the templates up onto yeah. some site, I can't remember, we, our site. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle, I tried. Yes, we will indeed be sharing all of the digital files for cards and the rulebook and the components that have words on them. So if you want to really design your own two, three, Project four, X Project X is everywhere. X. God, I wouldn't want to play that. Absolutely. Actually, I would. Just get like four bricks and a Hans in the mix. Yeah. Um, so Dothorian said, is anyone making tea for you guys tonight asking for a friend? No. Sadly not. I don't think anyone is here to make tea for us. As I said, unfortunately, Steve is laid up in hospital. We're sending him his, uh, our love. Yeah. Um, so no, there's no one. I think it's just you and I here all alone. I think everyone's, yeah. everyone's I think, gone. I think Dale's gone. Um, Sad face. Frank says, is there a possibility? No, please, please do. <laughs> please read. I'll just uh, quietly sit here and not look. I like reading. Oh, here you can read. Here they go. Read, 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 read oh, 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 I can read Frank. Is there a possibility not of this earth could alter game mechanics to make it more special? E.g. Grunts in 1944 would not be equipped to function in reduced gravity, so movement could be initially hampered and perhaps enhanced in later missions as they learn to move. And also there have significant gun, gun, gun kickback in a reduced G enviro -ment. A hero stats reduction would reflect that. Uh, yeah, so um, thanks for the do question. Do you want to translate that for anyone who's not a native English speaker who might be watching? Who oh might. yeah, that's bad. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> uh, about the, the, game, the mechanics changing for the not of this world. Yeah, so... Um, What's the expansion called? Not of this earth. There we go, just checking. It's, so not, it's <laughs> not as bad as the time when I forgot when the Kickstarter for Ragbusters was launching. That was a bad day. Um, 
Yeah, so if we, we, we are, you say, things are still in yeah, development, yeah, so we're not going to talk too much about you know, the actual mechanics behind it, but yeah, we are going to say the, the way the tiles are laid out and the way you can explore the world is going to be very different to this, um, the actual castle layout you bunker, see in front yeah. of you, the bunker and the, you know, the castle. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be very different. Uh, in terms of things like uh, gravity or you know, different kind of uh, you know, atmosphere, is an excellent point. Um, part of the way we're going to be doing that is by the fact that the board's not revealed in front of you. You're kind of exploring it, and that kind of feels like a fog of war, yeah. kind of exploring this alien world kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we, we, there's so every potential there'll be elements like that in the, in the mm. environment, but because that's such a game-changing thing, uh, it's probably best for us not to announce anything official now because we need to make sure it works with every single hero, with every single enemy type that we plan to put in on this earth. And the thing to remember is actually you can go ahead and use the raid uh, mission faction cards that you get um, with the core game components as well. You'll be able to bring the real Meisters across and play them in other maps and with other missions and stuff like that. So we don't want to put an other world special rule for a map for a real mice that just will never work for anyone else. Are you covering your mouth to stop yourself talking? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a silencer. <laughs> okay. An Ed suppressor add-on. Ed Ed suppressor, yeah. Would you like to read another question? It's a double question. I don't know if they really can handle that. A double question? Ooh. Stop it. Linus. Go on. Says, you, you take it away. Did I miss it? Or have we missed a close-up on model and background story of Mr. O'Reilly? I know he was captured and well-injected, but not much more. You haven't missed it, because no. we are keeping a lot of that under wraps, actually. Um, a lot of the campaign and narrative stuff we haven't been super vocal on, because we actually want you guys to discover that um, as you go through it. At some point. No. At no point. Um, so yeah, I mean, and as a quick question, uh, a quick answer to you guys who talked about Project X. Project X will fit in, in rooms, and I'm pretty sure he's going to have some custom stuff to make quarters and things work, so you don't need to worry about that. It will, he will play uh, like other other enemies. And um, the real Panzer, uh, Linus says, is an amazing model. Have I understood it correctly that the arms are interchangeable, or is the sculpt mirrored, or is it the same sculpt? Once more, keep up the great work. Epic campaign, most active Kickstarter I've ever been involved with, and huge thanks for the second real Panzer. Well, thank you guys yeah, for you guys just destroying the stretch goals in like no time at all. So you're very, very, very welcome. Um, the real Panzer, um, the second sculpt is the same sculpt as the first one. Um, it's not going to be different. If it's been mirrored or you've seen it at different angles, it's unfortunately not a second mini. It has, not a second, uh, different alternate sculpt. It is the same mini, just a second one of them to make the missions with the Brill Panzer that much tougher if you want to face two of them at the same time. Uh, the key thing to note uh, about the Brill Panzers is that um, on, the, on the tabletop, as we mentioned earlier, they're going to be multi-wound, they're going to be armoured, you're going to have mm. to really focus on who deals with them. If you don't have someone who can deal with them well, you're going to have to completely change your strategy mid-mission if you come up against one or two. Um, but yes, the minis will come pre-assembled ready to play out of the box. So they're not going to come in sprues. There's no clipping, uh, trimming, filing, gluing to be done. They come pre-assembled, good to go from the box. So they are exactly as you see them. And we will have a new update with Not of This Earth, with uh, close-ups of the minis, close-ups of the renders. You guys can get more detail and we can share those with you guys. We have a bunch of painted ones for Not of This Earth too. That'll be coming in the next Ooh. day or so. Um, do, do, do. Okay. So next question was from Roger. Says, will not of this earth be included within the all in? Yes, it will. Our all in is very much an all in. The gung ho pledge covers get everything. everything. Get everything. Uh, K Chubb says, will we get not of this earth gameplay? Not before the end of the campaign. I can say that now, unfortunately. We're. Um, we're not going to have gameplay footage of that because we're still tweaking a lot of this game. Um, mm. Right Busters will continue to be developed for the next couple of months and we will continually update you guys with changes, with new versions of the rulebook. And we will, of course, record some gameplay and show you because Right Busters is this nice, easy game. We can chuck it down, play it for yeah. an hour and a half, two hours and really have a bit of fun. Um, so we can absolutely show that off, no problem. We will in the future, but yeah. it will not be before the end of the campaign. It'll be likely during the Pledge Manager in January, I think, before yeah, we start Yeah, I think that would be there. accurate. Johnny McNabb says, do you play campaigns with the same characters every time unless they get captured, or do you change no. characters? Um, in the campaign? In the campaign. So mission to mission in the yeah, campaign, what do you do? 
You can change them. Uh, yeah, there's nothing to stop you from picking out different heroes. Um, once they're captured, yes. So you'll have to, uh, they'll, they'll pop up as side objectives mm -hmm. uh, to rescue, you know, kind of get into like, oh, there's a guy, you know, one of our guys is in that room kind of yep. thing. So um, yeah, you would then go and rescue them, get them back. You don't have to, you can yep. leave Brick behind, you know. He's not particularly subtle, let's That's face great. it. Um, but um, yeah, so if they're captured, you can't use them, but you can cycle through the pool of people you want. Bearing in mind, whatever guns and stuff they've upgraded, you know, they don't transfer to other people. So Quentin's bow doesn't go onto Irina because she doesn't have to use a yep. bow. She's useless with it and vice versa. He's no good of her pistols. So if you upgrade your real weapons for one weapon person, it doesn't transfer. So you kind of will start to kind of stick with one. But you know, if they get captured or something, you don't like how they're playing you out, the you, can, style, you, can, yeah. you can change them. Yeah, there's a team of Rikebusters. That, they're all at That's HQ. Mm -hmm. Wanting to kick some, ready to airplane. Get right in there. Uh, oh no. Anyway, next question. <laughs> John Henry Headley says, "Heroes, hero female slash male split, as it's easier to get female players at the club to play games with female characters in them." Well, I can tell you right now, at the moment, uh, we have Red Hawk, we have Irina, and we also have who's my third? Claudine. Claudine. Um, so we have three female heroes so far, and there will indeed be a fourth female character, so you can play uh, Fox Team. What is it? Uh, Fox, fo uh, Fox, uh, Fox, Fox Force 5? Fox, Fox Force 4. 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 Someone in the comments called Fox was uh, Fox so Whisperer. Fox Whisperer. Was that his name? Fox I think it was Fox Whisperer, yeah. And they were saying Fox Force 4. There will be, uh, all being oh, well, four, we keep hitting the stretch goals that we do hope to hit, there'll be a fourth female hero. And added. that female hero is very interesting. Very I unique. can't wait to talk about I can't, else, so. I really want to. I don't, because I can't, because if, if we don't make it, then I can't talk about mm -hmm. it. But let's just say, probably the most unique one we've got in the mix. Wow, that's a really bold statement. It is bold, but that's because, well, I'm going to say so. If she's challenging me. If anybody in the chat still has it, I shared a link about three or four days ago now during a Leo live, just to the Kickstarter comments of a little snippet of a mini, just 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 like the waist, the waist and 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 sort of rear section of a mini, just to show one particular item of an upcoming stretch goal. You yeah. probably know what it is now. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, now no, you've mentioned it. Uh, I think yeah, they're on par with probably Remy for the most. You know, because uh, I can't say too much. No, can't say too much. Let's just say. Remy's not all about killing. Mm. Okay, Zoltan said a very, wow, a, a very much rated up question. 17 people wanted to hear an answer to this. The Railway Yard is featured in the trailer. Will there be tiles for this location? Actually, no. Um, the Railway Yard is kind of where the right busters meet up and come together before they then start infiltrating into the castle. The, in mm. the core pledge, there's not going to be um, outdoor uh, missions around the castle and bunker. It will be going in to find the research labs and all the, the nasty stuff inside there. And then if you get into the Not of This Earth expansion, that's where you'll be going off world to a completely outdoor alien planet. Yeah. Who knows where it is? Um, we will not have the, the real yard, but we've heard a lot of people requesting it outdoor. We've also heard people requesting multi-map missions all sorts of different kind of cool ideas and we have made notes of them but it won't be yeah. in project real i can tell you no this. yeah even we would tempt yeah like the idea of a, of a train one yeah. but it's you know it's it's just too much you know it's, it's not feasible at the moment but yeah it's, it's definitely not a no yeah definitely not a no for the future it, it, it opens up a lot of interest in gameplay mm. um, exactly alexandria said do you know if i d do know if you covered this but are you planning to have the real panzer spawn I didn't see any faction where they were a unit. Are they more like mini bosses or a main boss? Um, so a couple of key things. We still have a bunch of faction cards that we haven't shared yet, we haven't dove into. We have Dr. Koff, we have Hugo Hander, the two Vrilmeisters from Not of This Earth. We also haven't shown off yet. Um, uh, uh, Gisela's brother? Yeah, Gisela Heinrich Gruber. Heinrich uh, Gruber. And we also haven't shown off General von Eisenberg's cards yet. Ah. So don't worry, there are a bunch more faction cards still to come where you're going to see these elements added. And again, we'll be sharing these with you guys just throughout the course of the campaign and afterwards mm. as well. The main thing about the Real Panthers is they're not bosses. No, they're not. They're, they're actually just, just horribly hard to hit. But because there's a limited amount, then there's only yeah. two. 
once it's on the board, and if another one wants to spawn, for example, yeah. uh, it wouldn't be able to spawn because it's already on the board. Well, you've got two, yeah. the two miniatures, then okay, you can have two of them uh, playing, yeah. so which makes things, oh dear. Obviously, <laughs> you know, we've shown before the likes of the Iron Wolf. This is one of General Wolf's faction cards where he has yeah. officers, soldiers, two different types of Sturm, Soldats, Tracking Bombers, Nazis, Scientists, and a dog. It's very much within reason that potentially one of Iron Wolf's gets rid of some of these guys and replaces them with a real or mm. multiple real pants. Answers. We will have multiple faction cards for Gisela and for General Wolf as well, but this is all stuff to be confirmed. You guys nailed the social stretch goal quicker than I yes, think uh, so, uh, we even thought. We've now got to throw two of them into the mix, which yeah. is going to be uh, <laughs> so much fun. Uh, so much pain. But yes, also because um, they are huge mm -hmm. and you know, some of these doors, you know, you're know, you not going to get a, a real panzer through that door. Mm -hmm. They are going to operate differently as well. So. Uh, yeah, and they're not going to be going through small doors. They're going to have, you know, they're going to you know, appear in these rooms, and unless they've got a clear way of getting through, yep. they're going to be fairly contained. But or if they see you, gun you. <laughs> or if they see you, they're just going to go and just completely. That was a good chain gun noise. Oh, I, thank I like, you. I like that, that, was like... that was that was that was. <laughs> oh, are we getting better? Yeah, it's better than my. Was... <laughs> my yeah, we'll shrek. come back to that one. We'll come back to that one. Um, we could get a soundboard. Seriously, we could get a soundboard. I think the guys are already on it. Uh, Jacob said, can heroes use other heroes' signature weapons or are they tied to the character? E.g. could Sars theoretically start a game equipped with Red Hawk's rifle or Bjorn's axe? Well, you answered this, but just to repeat. Yeah, they're, they're not trained in those weapons, um, so they're good. They, 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 they don't. Yeah, they wouldn't ever want to. I mean, Sars is going to look at this axe and just think, uh, you know, in a very American voice, which I'm not going to attempt. He's very, you know, uh, an awful dog. He doesn't like it. He likes his family heirloom, you know, pistol. And he likes his Thompson. He doesn't want no axe and, and browning. That's for common people uh, and for uncivilized Vikings. And while Quentin just likes his bow and arrow, it's very not, you know it's very silent, very skilled. And if he picks up, I don't know, a Panzer Shrek, he's gonna like he's not gonna know yeah. which way to stick it. He's gonna point it one direction, and the rocket's gonna go out the other way. So, or shell or whatever the technical word first. is. If you equip Quentin with a, a Panzer Shrek, it allows him to shoot backwards. <laughs> yeah, as, as and does. it launches him forward. And he goes really fast through the portal. Fact. Yeah. Um, there is much love for the sound effects, by the way. Uh, John says, will there be a way of playing with more than four players? So we'll tell you right now, John, at the base level of the game, it is one to four players. If you wanted to play more with four, you actually absolutely can. You could chuck some more heroes in there. You could bring some more players to the party. But we will be balancing the game primarily each mission around two, three or four heroes taking part in that. If you play with only one hero or you play with way more heroes, you could chuck a dozen heroes at this if you really wanted. You'll probably have to do a little bit of home house ruling to kind of yeah. tweak the difficulty to match it up because we're primarily balancing for two, three, four heroes depending on one, two, three or four players. Yeah, I mean the idea, the idea behind that is, yeah, when you got one player, you're you're burning for a lot of cards to kill these Nazis, and by the time you've kind of you've cycled through your deck, you then discard a card permanently, and you, you're fighting your way through. And yes, you can act a lot, but you're going to get tired really quickly. So your hero is going to get worn out. They, they basically just collapse on the floor yeah. and get beaten up by zombies. And with the five or more players, a lot of, there could be a lot of downtime. And also, if you're taking five turns before you act again, potentially six or seven or eight turns. That's a lot of bullets are going to hit you, and you could be pretty dead. Yeah. So it's it's, a, it's not balanced really for those numbers, but you can. No you one's really going to stop you. Want to. It's, you know. Um, Unk says, "Will the Mythic Games team do the hacker if we reach a certain amount of pledge money?" I think at least half the team would be down for that. I would be down for doing the hacker if we hit I, a mill. I, I would probably hack a solo. I would, although nervous about cultural appropriateness. Oh God, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll come back to that one, Unc. Um, I'll do a dance. <laughs> yes, he was, He doesn't need to reach a million. If you want Ed to dance, just tell just, him to dance. Just tell him to start waving around the back. Um, yeah, I'm not a hit with the ladies. <laughs> Tarius says, are you planning any more cards in the stretch goals that are not related to action cards of new heroes, more raid cards? At the moment, I think if you do go gun-ho, I believe there are 20, either 23 or 25 different raid cards to build from which gives an incredible amount of combinations and um, i don't think we're going to have need to have any more for the stretch goals but as the guys develop the game as you kind of fit these units into all the different real matches, potentially but not just that but also as we've mentioned um we're going to put the templates out for people to create their own yeah. so there's nothing to stop you from you know in the future downloading completely new maps that someone else has created uh missions you know whatever you know 
potential factions, you know, that, that you can put together. And that will go from, I think we worked out that it's currently for the mission, the map, and the factions, there's 80 combinations, not including the heroes, mm -hmm. which then spiral into the tens of thousands of combinations. Yep. But currently we're on 80, plus whatever you guys come up with, then that will just knock it out of the ballpark. And they're going to be like hundreds, thousands, whatever you come up with. And that's going to, the replayability is just going to explode. Yeah. And that's not including potential future stuff. We don't know what might happen. Who knows? Who knows what might happen to Right Busters? <laughs> Duke going down. <laughs> Unk says, what about uh, weapon names on the cards for real and fictional weapons? Would very much like that more depth. So, so I think... Um, you know, like on knives and stuff where it says uh, knife. Yeah. It, it, it's it's Burning. a it's a space issue. I mean, yeah, it's it's keeping it clean and neat and, and kind of tidy. If as long as you know that this is a suppressed pistol, does it matter exactly which one? Uh, I mean, maybe. it's it's tricky. It's it's making it clean and, and nice and, and concise. I mean, possibly could put it, you know, speak to art. Maybe we could have it faded in the background or something. But it might take away from some of the artistic -y appeal aesthetics. Yeah, this, these, the, the information on, the, on these are really just to ensure that you kind of don't miss the keywords. You get the key information for your attack and noise dice, and then mm. you just get into it. Maybe um, we'll have it in the book where you got the image and it just says a bit about yeah. it, some sort of historical That's nice bit. Idea. That's nice idea. Thank you. Um, Not I'll just annoying noises. Also, well, speaking of annoying noises, he wants to know what sounds do Wanyans make. Wanyan. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was an excellent lead into that. Oh god. Um, do you want to take some time to think about it? No, 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 because no, no, they, they're right. Because the Wanyans. Wait, wait, pass me a Wanyan. What does that look like? Yeah, he's a little clickety clacky. So he's like, oh. <sighs> so hold on. Let me let me let me put him on camera. And then you can, he's and then clicky clacking. So he's a little, he's a little Claw's going clicky clacky clicky clacky. And he's going wop, 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 Like that. Like that. Oh, clicky clacky, clicky clacky. You need to make the clicky clacky noises for me. I'll do the clicky clacky. And I'll do the wop, 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 wop. Okay, so I just say clicky clacky. You just go clicky clacky, clicky clacky. And I've broken the law of the game and I'm going to be executed tomorrow. No, that's that's actually in the game. That is, that is the law now. Is that that's right, Buster? That's right, Buster's law. That's, oh, that's no. right, law. Jake, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's not even remotely sorry. Micah said. Oh no, wait. Sorry, Antoine said. Ant, uh, sorry, Anthony. Sorry, said. Um, did the Commandos video game have any influence on the game design slash mechanics? I love that game. I don't think. Is it um, Commandos by chance? No, no. He's talking about Commandos, the video game. This was like back from like 1995 or something, mm. where you kind of had a top-down view of your Commando team working through the darkness, and you were kind of. It was almost like a real-time XCOM kind of feeling. Okay. Commandos was an absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing game. Um, I think the feeling of Right Busters definitely owns a little bit to those kinds of games and that kind of genre, but it's not something that we directly captured from. We really wanted to design our own world and our own feeling with these kind of lulls and then epic heroic moments and then completing missions and running away. It's the, the feeling of Right Busters has a very kind of um, unique uh, when you play it, a really unique feel. Um, but yes, you have to pay homage to the likes of Wolfenstein, to the likes of Zuckerberg, to the likes of Borderlands for the big, you know, garish in your face art. You know, mm. there's a lot of things that we looked into, um, but we think we've really defined uh, Right Busters as its own thing. Yeah. Micah says, Little have a grillmeister competition every summer in Finland. Coincidence? <laughs> grillmeister competition in France. The myth grill, grill, grill master. Real master, Real yeah, but master. we now got a Real Master. Real Master? But also, that, that, that was my, one of my favorite puns of the other day, was a, a real cheese sandwich. And I was, oh, God, I'm hungry now. I'm just mm, I am starving. Yeah. I actually said, question copied for Will Baker. Will there be an African female hero? I can say no, unfortunately. There will not be an African um, female hero in this uh, Right Busters project, Will. But an idea for the future. Yeah, sure. good idea for the future. Jamie said, we know you guys have a list of all the stretch goals you have. If you haven't reached them, will there be a chance to buy the unreached ones? As I know, all the bathies at the moment want as much right busters goodness as possible. Um, so, Jamie, yeah, that's, to, to be honest with you, something we can only really judge as we kind of go on with the campaign. It's very unlikely that we do that. There's always the option that we can add additional things in the pledge manager, as we will be doing with the likes of extra dice. We're very much hoping to be able to arrange that. And we will look at card sleeves and potentially a play mat if we think it suits the game. We're always doing these kind of additional add-ons during pledge managers where we feel it really matches with the, the game that we have. Um, will we have anything we don't reach? 
Can't say. Uh, it just it just it depends how we finish up. Depends what we hit. We want to ram as much of the stretch goal content in as we possibly can. Mm. So we hope to unlock it all. That would really be ideal. Uh, Unc says thanks for printing infos. Maybe printing vids someday. Time lapse. Not a hundred percent. Oh, I see. He's wanting videos about printing, like three D printing. Uh, thing. That's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. if I have a memory card long enough to record a whole print. But Depends if you will, because it takes like 22 hours. But if you did it like, um, so it, you've got plugged it in and it does like a picture every... Yeah, we could do some kind of time lapse thing. We could. Um, What's put... difficult is the fact that the way the printer prints, rather than being um, a filament printer where it builds up layers and kind of builds it up, it's the print bed is flat and it raises up. And so it does a layer, like a big, like a yeah. sandwich bread and it lifts itself up and then it comes back down and puts another layer of the sandwich in and it does that thousands yeah. of times. You really, yeah, it's hard, Hundreds hard to really- Hundreds go on to thousands. So it's very slow. So everything it pulls out, you see it, but it's not the clearest, unfortunately. It's also inside its own uh, orange casing, which the camera looking through, it's not the best. Uh, yeah, I feel it would, it would be a disappointment. Yeah. I mean- I'm pretty sure if you YouTube there is hundreds upon thousands of other people who have better quality 3D printing tutorials and time lapses than we yeah, can provide. Exactly, sadly it won't be Ragbuster's content. We can still watch the 3D mm -hmm. printers, they're pretty. Um, are, the, are the dashboards and the cardboard tokens gonna to be upgraded? Well, I can tell you 100% that the dashboards won't be because the dashboards are freaking awesome. The ones we have at the moment are just prototypes. Yeah, they were um, done on an Ultine, no. Yeah, these will uh, be something um, gorgeous, filament printer. Go gorgeous plastic with, with the indented areas that you can see to allow you to uh, push your finger down and pop in and out your your weapons and your skills nice they, and neatly. They were prototypes made by our very own awesome Steve. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are just prototypes. The, fin the final ones look. Gorgeous. Yeah, they look. Yeah, they're much. Yeah, much more refined um, and finished. But. So yes, there's, there's there's no need. To Plus, those. I can promise you, once you click in, you know, you're pushing these little bits in. It's just so satisfying just to push it down yeah. and pick it out. It's just it's it's wonderful. I can't um, say it enough. The cardboard tokens again. To be honest, because we have literally so many different weapons we have items we have a bunch of tokens obviously for in-game tracking and guard points then we also have the skills and um, nice high quality punch board just makes the most sense and again you just to show you guys like we're, we're going to ensure that these are nice and and clean and cut and well matched these are going to be high quality they're not going to be the things we're showing you here like these things these are our own kind of prototypes that we're mocking together in the office these don't look the best these are just our own in-house little tests I mean, they look fantastic. something yeah something more <laughs> like this Give yeah. you an idea of the final, like nice quality we'll have of the nice still prototype, great, great cup, still prototype, but this is more the quality we'll go for. Yeah. So, really, there are so 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 many um, tokens and items, things in the game that really nice high quality punch board is the the, the best way we can possibly do that. Um, upgrading it would would increase costs just massively because there are so many um, different equipment um, combinations. Um, let me see. Da, da, da. I'm going through the rest of the questions. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. Nerdy drooling. We're so popular. Uh, so da, David said, maybe this has been changed. Maybe it's in the works. In an earlier playthrough, I noticed that you guys had item tokens randomized face down on the table. Is there any possibility of this feature being adjusted so they can be used as a token bag? I played similar games where we've had tokens lying around at the table and we've found this to be slightly awkward. Could we maybe you see generic double-sided item tokens that require you to draw from a random, let's come here, can't see the end of it, random item deck. So not a random item deck because every item token in the game is gonna be unique. It's gonna have sound attached to it. It's gonna have interesting elements. Um, but you're exactly right, very, very well seen that we have two different types of items. We have those that are found in rooms that are already there that you can decide to interact or not interact with. But then we also do have, no, do I have, are they over here? Uh, yeah. Is it helmet shaped? Yeah, so we also have these tokens, which are, um, as you see, these have all the same uh, exactly as you've said, all the same bats. And these are loot drop tokens. So these are actually like mission specific. These are there's, there's like a health pack and a miscellaneous. So so these ones, exactly as you said, David, these are the ones that you keep off as, as a separate pool. And these come from drops. If you manage to roll a special symbol on uh, an enemy that it could potentially drop an item, which is basically human. So not non-experimental things. Yeah, so you can, trigger. instead of spending that star to trigger a special keyword, mm -hmm. you can use it to trigger a drop. So if you've got a spare star at the end, you can go, well, he's gonna drop a, a blah, 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 whatever he drops. You know, just you just randomly. randomly draw it out, flip it over. Well, you, when you pick it up, you look at it and go, wow, that's awesome, it's a grenade. Yeah. 
So in this case, we some have goggles. some med kits, some bandages, and a radio. And again, this will be something that we can kind of tailor. Um, we can create pools of these items depending on the mission. So if there's missions related to finding an item that's dropped by an officer that you need to get to get key, we can mm. kind of tailor that that drop pool and make that more interesting. We won't unfortunately be creating a, a bag or something to draw mm. from but it absolutely would suit if you want to do that at home i yeah. am i'm a huge fan i don't know if you guys know this stuff but goo desserts um, they make these little glass trays uh, i use for food. my pandemic cubes and i use for my euro games and they're great for randomly drawing things too so, hungry. so um <laughs> yeah we'll not be providing a bag with the campaign but you're exactly right you can absolutely pop these all and just draw them draw them randomly um uh, Andreas said, will there be SG Nazi soldiers with grenades or Faust patrons um, with possibility to make shot from distance, make boom and wound all heroes in the room? There will be plenty of enemies which have ways of wounding multiple heroes. Yeah, well, uh, in the Not of This Earth expansion, yeah. you'll see that they are these heavy weapon guys. These guys got big, you know, there's, a, there's a crew, there's a guy with a massive real rocket boom cannon on his shoulder and another dude kind of trying to like almost like eagle feeding the rockets into this into this weapon and they will have you know they will just go and everyone in the, an area will just get blown to bits you know I feel like almost like an instant wound kind of thing mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty much like being hit by a panda shrek so like a, like a, the enemy version of hans almost in, so yeah um there will be things that will basically just blow the heroes to bits so kill take them down run from them whatever but they will be mean and nasty and you don't want to meet them Job said, can we get four weapon description cards to detail what those descriptions mean on different weapons, meaning unreliable, armor piercing? Mm. Yes, we'll, we'll absolutely have those kind of Yeah, we've got the little reference um, sheet cards. With all the kind of key skills and keywords for items and stuff, that's no problem at all, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and in fact, Johnny came straight in saying reference cards that list talents, skills like rage, you have to keep looking in the manual. Absolutely, Johnny. We'll, can they we'll, like a stretch goal like where that's you can have a, one in Ragbuster language and one in Edison's so you can have it as described as Ed would describe it. That'll be a forty-five-dollar add-on for anybody that wants your Ed isms cards. Uh, Three says, beautiful. "Can you tell us a bit about the real Panzers? How they're used in the game? Will the heroes get control of one so they can face off one against another?" Bray, you, you, we can't <laughs> tell you that. Come on, Bray. That sounds cool. That's, well, the, 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 we've talked about it in comments quite a bit, but I, I've been trying to keep everyone calm because it's it's. Uh, I've, I'm being silenced. Yeah. I'm being silent. You're just going to have look. to wait and see what happens with the uh, the double. Let's just say they've got multiple hits. They're big, they're bad, they're nasty. They've got chain guns that make the noise I made that sounded really good, but I don't know if I can replicate it. It was good. It was. No. I no, that that's more of a plane that shoots out the side. <laughs> or possibly I'm drooling. Uh, let me see. So coming to the final questions. Um, are there any extra weapons to pick up during missions? Um, not weapons to pick up during missions. Things like grenades and other real powered shenanigans and stuff. Uh, yeah, will be items you can pick up that will allow you to do attacks and stuff. But uh, no, your two main weapons are yours, um, personalized to your character. Yep. Um, you can't trade them for anyone else's. You can only upgrade them to real powered awesomeness. Um, we had a question about Kickstarter exclusives. Will there be any more? I mean, at the moment, we have O'Reilly plus three Kickstarter exclusive stretch goals, plus we have Kickstarter exclusive Realmeister with Heinrich Gruber, Gisela Gruber's brother. We also have a bunch of three uh, Kickstarter exclusive aesthetic elements like the alarm tracker and the dog tags. Um, you know, right now, we definitely want to give you know, a bunch of value to the Kickstarter exclusive stuff alongside the additional alternate sculpts. The important thing to note is that those uh, alternate sculpts are additional and they will be used. Um, we can. Yeah, we can. We've actually been shared, I think. Uh, Heinrich Gruber uh, will take advantage of mass swarm hordes of those extra minis that you get by being a Kickstarter backer rather than waiting for retail. So there's a bunch yeah. of stuff in there, and I do think there will be a couple more Kickstarter exclusive items to be added in. Any plan for unlocking stretch goals faster? We would love to. We would love to unlock stretch goals faster. We just got to keep powering on and, and giving people awesome stuff to come and join. Right now, we went from 4,000 to 4,025 backers just in this short live stream that we've been doing. So I think motion's still good. We're, we definitely want to keep unlocking them and we'll, we'll keep an eye on and making sure we're doing it well. Um, Funky Boy Paco says, are the stretch goals related to specific expansions or to the core game? Every single stretch goal um, in Ragbusters Project Rail can be used the entire game 
We are not doing anything specific. It's going to go to every single backer, whether you back at Heroic Pledge or you back um, at the Gung Ho, or you just get the, one of the individual expansions if you just want Project X or you just want Not of This Earth. A great example of that is in Not of This Earth, there are some Uber Soldats, the guys with the awesome power of swords, and the guy with the, yep. <laughs> um, and uh, I need to remember what time was that. That's going to be the thumbnail on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> wait, we're doing that way or together? Well, you hold on. Wait, no, no, wait. You no, you stay there. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, the great example of the way we're kind of going with the game is that the Uber Soldats in the Not of This Earth expansion are, are, are just really for that. They'll they'll have their own uh, implementation in the campaign. But you can also use them in your standard raid missions when you're mixing and matching your objectives, uh, your factions, and your maps. Mm. And then we give away in Stretch Goals today two more over soldiers, uh, over soldats in completely different weapons, completely different sculpts, massive big hammers. And that's going to everybody, whether you're getting the Knot of this Earth expansion or not. It goes to the heroic pledgers, uh, pledgers right at the base level. So we want to add um, good content for every single person. That's, that's the goal. Uh, I think we're nearly there. Chris Wilkins say, will you be able to get the dog tags made in metal? Chris Wilkes, sorry, we are, yeah, Wilkes. We looked into it, and oh my goodness, were the dog tags expensive. Um, so if you want to add, add earlier, come on. Am, you, am I okay to bring them across now? Come on. <laughs> uh, we have a, a couple of early um, little kind of prototypes of these that we've been working on in, in, in the office. Um, these are the plastic ones that we've just kind of done up. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Um, so at the moment, I do think, unfortunately, we are sticking with the plastic ones um, because it's just what's really economical. The, the metal ones, unfortunately, were very, very expensive. Mm. Um, and it's not something we add, wanted to add the weight of to everyone's pledge. So yeah, and at the moment, we're going to plastic. And I think the plastic look really Yeah, they're actually, awesome. I'm super, super stoked with these, actually. Yeah, I was excited to get these off the printer. And they'll finish all straight in there. Um, Jimmy Ray says, can we get a raid revolving around the Gruber siblings? It's going to have to happen, even if it's not in this game. Double trouble. Yeah, it might oh. be. In, it could be in the next season, or it could be in uh, a community-driven thing, possibly. I mean, it's going to have to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, I'm not, in some shape or form. Yeah. I'm not sure if we will have it in, in Rick Brush's Project Reveal, the print, but definitely something we could add in in some other shape or form, I think. Mm. Yeah, the great thing is we are... Um, we are upgrading the mythicgames.net website on a regular basis. We're kind of adding different things. And one of the new things that's coming soon will be a download section. We'll have Jonah Bark stuff. We'll have Solomon Kane stuff. And we'll also have Ragbuster stuff on there as well. So you can go and help yourself to whatever you like. Yeah. Um, Adrenus said, it'd be awesome to have more Kickstarter exclusive enemies. By the way, love the Hammer Guys. I love the Hammer Guys as well. The Uber Soldats with the Hammer are immensely cool mm. um, and yeah we, we obviously love Kickstarter exclusives because it's a fine balance we want to give you guys as many treats as we can and discounts as we possibly can for supporting us in these early stages this it means the world to us and um, but we also want to ensure that the final box because we would love right busters to go to retail is still full of good content for people who weren't able to back it to so it's a fine it's a, it's a yeah. fine balance um, and yeah we understand we, we appreciate the support you guys give us um, at this point that's us question wise, except I did see uh, Jamie said in the chat, will there be an insert to protect the mini? So yes, you will have plastic inserts that will fit into cardboard boxes. But again, this is something we'll share in the future. So if you paint them, they'll sit in nice and snug, slide them away, and they're not going to be diving off anywhere. And you, you, your painted minis will be absolutely fine. Mm. Woof. Woof. <laughs> Woof. All right. Hey, I didn't hear my question, said Mark. Mark, I'm sorry. Let me. What did you say, Mark? Tell us. Tell us now. Let me look. Let me look. I'm running. I'm looking through. I'm looking through. I'm look. No. Nope, That's right, Mark. I would through. never. I would never miss you. Mark. But I didn't miss your comments. Mark. Mark. I I Mark. There's you. no. I don't see a question from Mark. Maybe he's lying to us. So type it in the chat again. Is Mark. it? Type it in the chat, Mark, because if you didn't, you mustn't have put it in the Q and A, buddy, because I cannot see it. Uh, sleeve cars two. Uh, so just type it in chat, Mark. Well, I'm any, any final questions? Let's do a quick fire. Type them in chat, guys. We'll do a final few questions. Um, sleeve cards too. So um, yes, we, it's not 100% confirmed, but we very much would like to have. Um, there's not that many cards in the game that's a huge issue. So we will hopefully be able to provide you with a box that will fit the sleeve cards. We will sell card sleeves for the entire uh, range um, in the pledge manager as well. So if you buy a heroic pledge, we'll give you exactly what you need. Or if you buy a gung ho pledge, we can give you exactly what you need. 
Will the, will the all in pledge end up in multiple boxes? Very likely we've unlocked a huge amount of stretch goals. So you will have um, one box with all the heroic pledge bits. You'll have the Kroji X expansion in a box and the Not of This Earth expansion in a box. And then we may just have to put all your unlocked stretch goals in something nice and shiny and gorgeous. Because you know us at Milligan, we don't like to stick it in crappy cardboard. Or Hell anything. no. You just have to keep an eye on that. Um, there is a question in French, which I'm going to very quickly copy. Google Translate. Google Translate. Ho, oh, let's do this. Um, so it says, so I come back from the sport. What does the come back from the sport? What does the Frank, French the speaking hole say? Maybe they went to the sport uh, game. Anyone speak French can translate Sturm's question for me, if possible. Let's look at it again. We live should turn into Edisms. We can work it out. Stop that. Stop that right now. <laughs> oh, I think it may have been answered already. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, Az. Uh, Let's see. Will there be an African female here? As I mentioned earlier, Will Baker, no, unfortunately, there will definitely not this time around. Uh, I confirmed nothing, Jamie. I confirmed nothing. He wants a summary in French. I'm sorry. I am unable to give you a summary in French. Leo will be back tomorrow night. Full of spoilers and today? dragons. And what day of the week is it? And hair. What it, day is it? Today's Monday. Is today Monday? I think so. God, it's Is all today Monday? It is Monday. Guys, I, what day of the week is I it? I just had a sleep in yesterday. The first time in a while. Yes. Monday. Thanks, Jimmy. Oof. If you're in Australia, it's now Tuesday. Uh, it's definitely. I think there's more places on Tuesday already. Um, so... Yes, tomorrow Leo will be back and can absolutely answer your questions in French. Hint on next here, Aussie maybe. I'm it's saying nothing. It's because I said Australia just ended in it. Right. Time for us to get out of here. Food. Just want to eat some food. Dinner. Mark added a Mark Mark just added a question. Hold on. Mark, this better be. Is this is Mark's missing this question. This better be the most amazing question. Yeah, but I'm to man. Where is it? Looking. What? What? Did you Mark? Mark? Maybe he said in the chat. Looking for it, looking mm. for it. Anticlimactic ending to the live stream. I don't know. Mark, buddy, type it in chat. Type it in chat. What do, what do you want to know? I, I cannot yeah, see it, I'm afraid, Mark. It's not bearing. Cannot see it. He's telling lies. Can't see it, buddy. I'm sorry. Quick, Mark, ask, ask it in chat. Go, go, go. Quick, quick, quick. Three, two, Right, we're going to get ready to wrap up. We're going to wait for Mark's final question. Goodness, the pressure on Mark's question now is immense. Here it comes. Mark. He must be typing out an essay <laughs> here. Is it a story for him to... What about the aliens? That is the vaguest question. The once, the, once the live stream's over, you'll be able to replay it and go back right to the start we, where we talked yeah. about the aliens if you missed it. We do, yeah, we just we covered the aliens earlier. We told you, we gave them names. We said what they're gonna do. Thank you, Sasha, very much for for offering to do a French summary. That's very kind of you. Thank you for that. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we'll um we'll have more to share on Kickstarter updates of Not of This Earth. So we'll do some written content and also some close ups and nice artistic and painting painted versions of some Not of This Earth minis um later on this week as well. So we'll have some written content and more information on Not of This Earth to come. Thank you, folks. Have a lovely evening. Jamie, it was nice to have you here. I'm looking forward to my Tim Tims. It's going to be the best um, cost of sport. You want a summary? Yes, give the summary. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for being here. We got over 27 backers and during this time. It was a real pleasure welcoming every single one of you yeah, here. No, thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, Ed, for providing the sound effects. And <laughs> I'm very much expecting a soundboard to be done by someone in the chat. Um, okay, that I've peaked early in life. <laughs> <laughs> bye, Bruno. Bye, Jamie. Bye, Frank. Bye, Alex. Bye, Elisa. Bye, Gary. Bye, everybody. Uh, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, well, hold on a second. I, I need to, to get over I was there. Say, I need to give you some you music. You need to give me some outro music. Well, I need to give you some sound effects. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do sound effects as he's walking. Oh, this is it's, not gonna go it's, well. It's, for it's, me. It's add sound effects. <laughs> Clunk, 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 click, 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 type, 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 type. <laughs>